those have connected just now please note we are waiting for more participants to join so those those participants do not miss out anything also i have shared the links for the social media platforms and our event pages our community so make sure you follow us over there we do share the updates on upcoming webinars workshops which we which we do on regular basis so make sure you follow us over there Okay, so we'll start the webinar now. Hello and welcome you all in this webinar on artificial intelligence with Microsoft Azure. Um, myself, Chaitali, your host for this webinar. Uh, guys, please note you all have been kept on mute to make sure that the webinar will be smooth throughout. If you have any doubt or question, you can uh, go and write your queries in the chat box. We are there to help you out. Moving in, talking about the event and webinar sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. So you get a question now, uh, what we do and who we are. So answering to your question, uh, we browse you through uh, offerings and also give a comprehensive advisory services. Who wish to modernize their framework, uh, we educate, advise, implement and manage. Uh, then as you can see on the screen, we have solutions. 
we do provide trainings under the solutions. The solutions like uh, persona based onboarding, onboarding add on, certification solution. Then we have certification add on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. So today's uh, webinar comes under onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, and certification add-on solution. Then what, uh, what does Microsoft certification training does? It will give a complete learning experience. Uh, you will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. That is, you get recognized. Then we do have delivery methodology, like how you can go from uh, go for advanced certification. Once you can uh, come trainings. So this is the journey path. We have three type of learning uh, learning journey. First is guided self learning. Then we have blended learning and instructor led training. Yeah, you can see we do provide advanced paid training at minimum cost. For that, yeah, you, you just have to complete the fundamental training and then you can go for the advanced level certifications. Uh, the certification includes live mentoring, uh, recorded session, practice labs, exam prep session, practices for this uh, certification. Then you will be ready to appear for the certification exam and get certified. Then the certification benefits to the organization. You can shift from uh, unstructured learning to structured learning. Then you can build a comprehensive advantages to your organization, adding profit to the business and enhance brand reputation. And how you can advance yourself. So this is the scaling journey of the Microsoft certifications. First, you have to complete the fundamental certification, and then you can go for the advanced level and expert level certifications. The certification trainings uh, on which Synergetics do provide trainings. Here you can see the fundamental certifications like AZ 900. Then we have AI 900, that is Azure AI fundamental, then DP 900, which is related to the data, then PL 900, Power Platform fundamental, and SC 900, that is security compliance and identity fundamentals. Then we do provide training like AZ 104, AZ 204, AI 102. DP203, PL series, and also SC series in associate level. And in expert level, we do provide training on AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. To know more about the certification trainings, you, you can connect with us. I will share the link. Uh, I will share the email ID with you all in the chat box later on. So you can connect to that. Then we have certification offerings. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skill. We do provide certification add-ons, onboarding add-ons, like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead and talking about today's uh, training which is organized and handled by the ATC community. That is Azure Tech community. So ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies and various emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, open source IoT, uh, then cloud and DevOps. Under this ATC community, we have different communities like emerging technology community for all. 
Then we have Azure Tech Community Pune, specifically for Punekers. Emerging Technology Community Surat for Surat Techies. Then Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpurgers. Simply you just have to uh, no, install the Meetup app on your phone to follow our communities. Once you install the app on your phone or on your device, you can just follow this community. I will share the links in the chat box so you all can go and follow us over there. We do updates. Uh, we do keep on updating the upcoming webinars, workshop trainings. Over there. Then you have to follow the code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Uh, please note. No one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. Uh, we'll try and upload this uh, training on our official YouTube channel. Also, we'll try to share this uh, recording with all, all the participants, those who will like to do the revision on this topic. We we'll share this uh, recording on their official email ID. Then speaker for this training is Mr. Smit Shah. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as a training consultant. An agenda for this webinar, you will get an overview of AI as well as AI 900 and AI 102. OK, so uh, we are providing AI 900 learning achievement badge as well as AI 102 learning achievement badge as this uh, topic includes both both the topics. We are not going into basics related to AI 900, but we are definitely uh, talking about AI 102. But if you are willing to get the batch activated related to AI 900, that is AI fundamentals, you, are, you just have to follow certain steps and get your batch activated. I will be sharing both the links, like both the batches in the chat box in some time. Uh, for that, you have to first open your Microsoft Learn account. And just click on the link which will be shared in the chat box. And you have to activate the batch to get the modules and learning material related to the topic. Please note, I will be sharing AI 900 learning achievement batch as well as AI 102. So you have to make sure you activate the batches to get the modules and overview of the topic. Then do follow us on our social media platforms. Like as I said earlier, I have shared the links in the chat box for you all. You just have to go and follow us on our LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube channel. So make sure that you don't miss out on the updates regarding to the upcoming webinars, workshop certification training with Synergetics do. That's all from my side. Thank you all for listening to me. Now I'd like to hand over the mic to the speaker. Thank you. Thanks, Chaitali. All right, guys, so let's go ahead. I'll just present my screen and we will start our webinar for today. <clears throat> just let me know in the chat whether all of you guys can see the screen or not. Just give me a confirmation. Yes, right. OK, thanks, Mohamed. Fine, so let's go ahead, guys. So today, as Chaitali mentioned earlier, the concepts that we'll be learning will be helpful to you in both the certification exams. First is the AI 900 certification exam, and second is AI 102 certification exam. So guys, today we'll be learning about how you can use Azure AI services to do your daily tasks. So let's go ahead and let's dive into it. So first, Let's understand what is AI. So I'll just go ahead and we'll get an introduction to AI. We'll learn some of the AI related terminologies. All right, so let's go ahead. And throughout the lecture, whatever I mentioned, I will be making notes in my OneDrive over here. And uh, if you want the notes, we'll definitely share it with you guys. All right, so let's go ahead. So first, 
let's understand some of the AI related terminologies. So first let's understand what is AI. So guys, AI is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. I repeat, AI is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. Now, what are those two purposes? Well, first purpose is to get inference from the data. Second purpose is to get prediction on the data. I repeat, what is AI? AI is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from the data. Second purpose is to get predictions on the data. Now let's understand these two terms, inference and prediction in detail. Now what do I mean by the term inference? So for example, let's suppose I have data of a very big company called DMART. And looking at the data, let's say a employee is getting to know that people are coming into DMART mostly in the evening time. So that employee will tell to his boss that, OK, boss, make sure that evening time all the employees are ready, all of your arrangements are done and so on. So that employee is getting to know this insight from the data. This insight is nothing but inference. So in order to get these inferences, we can use AI. That is one. What is the second usage of AI? You can even use AI to get predictions. So for example, let's say I have weather data up till 2022 and I want to know that, OK, based on how much it has rained up till 2022, I want to predict how it will rain in 2023. So I want to predict something about the future. So we can even use AI for that. So AI is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inference from the data. Second purpose is to get predictions from data. Now, how do we do that? We do that by using something called a AI model. So in order to get inferences and predictions from data, we need to use something called a AI model. So what is a AI model? A AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. I repeat, a AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. Now, what do I mean by this statement? Let's try to understand it. So in simple words, it basically means that we try to simulate a real world process using some statistics or using some mathematics. Let's try to understand this with the help of an example. So let's say I have some data with me. I have housing data. OK, so let's say I have information about the a square feet of the house. And price of the house. Now let's say I surveyed some of the houses in my locality and I found out that the first house that I surveyed had a square feet of 100 square feet and the price was 1 crore. The second house that I surveyed had a square feet of let's say 200 square feet and the price was let's say 2 crore. Now suppose the third house that I'm surveying has a square feet of 300 square feet. Now, can anybody predict the price of the house over here? Can anybody give a rough estimate of the price of the house? What about you, Mohammed? So currently in my locality, I have surveyed some of the houses. The first house that I surveyed had a square feet of 100 square feet. Price was 1 crore. The second house that I surveyed had a size of 200 square feet. Price was 2 crore. Now, the third house that I'm surveying as a size of 300 square feet. So are you able to predict the rough price of the house? Yes, you are right. I believe Mohammed has given a rough estimation. Soumya and other people have also given a rough prediction. And you guys are right. Based on the information that you have currently, it seems that this new house would have a price of 3 crore. So how did you arrive at this prediction? So in your mind, you try to use some mathematics, right? You try to use some statistics, although it was very basic statistics that you used. It was very basic mathematics that you used, but you did try to use some mathematics in your mind. And AI model does exactly that. It uses mathematics or statistics to simulate what would happen in the real world. So up till now, we have learned about two terminologies. First, what is AI? 
So if anybody asks you what is AI, you will say that AI is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get inference from the data. Second is to get prediction on the data. Now, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions on the data? We do that by using something called a machine. We use that. We do that by using something called a AI model. So what is a AI model? A AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to use some statistics or mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world. Now remember that there is a prerequisite for building any AI model. There is one prerequisite of building any AI model and that is data. OK, without data, you cannot go ahead and build any AI model in the world. So in order to build any AI model in the world, you will definitely need your data. OK, so up till now we have learned about what is AI. We have learned what is an AI model and we have learned the prerequisite to build an AI model. Now that we have understood these basic terminologies, let's go ahead and let's focus on the main topics of this webinar. All right. So guys, today in this webinar, we are going to see how you can use Azure to take help of these AI concepts over here. So we'll see how to use Azure to get inferences from data. We'll see how to use Azure to get predictions from data. All right, so let's go ahead and let me make some notes over here. So now we are going to go ahead and learn how you can use Azure to fulfill your AI needs. All right. So guys, in Azure, you have many, many AI services. In Azure, we have many, many AI services that you can use for different, different purposes. Now, these AI services can be divided into two types. OK, so in the first type, you have pre-built AI models. OK, so in these type of AI models, you do not need to do any training whatsoever. These are ready made models uh, and you can just go ahead and use it. OK, no need of any training. The second is. Custom models. Second type is custom AI models. So in these models, you do require some technical knowledge of how to build the AI models, what, what will be the algorithm that will run behind the scenes and all of that. OK, so Azure does provide AI services and there are two type of AI services that it provides. First, it provides pre-built AI models that you can use. Second, it provides it gives you the ability to build custom models also. Today, guys, we'll be only focusing on pre-built AI models. OK, I repeat, today we'll only be focusing on pre-built AI models. And in pre-built AI models, there are different categories. To be precise, there are four categories of pre-built AI models. So first category is called language. So there are many language related services available in Azure. The second category is speech. So there are many speech related services available in Azure. The third category is vision. So there are many vision related services available in Azure. And the fourth and last category is decision. So there are many decision related services available in Azure. Now, what are these services? When I say that, OK, there are many language services, there are many speech services, there are many vision services, and there are many distance services. Which exact services am I talking about? So let's go ahead and let's understand about it. So as far as language services are concerned, there are many, many language services. We'll talk about a few of them over here. So one is something called Azure AI language. Second is something called Azure AI Translator. Second is something called Azure AI Translator and we'll dive into each of these services, so don't worry. For now, I'm just listing these services one by one. And like that, there are many, many language services. The 
moving on to our second category, which is speed service. So let's go ahead and let's understand about speed services. So what all different speed services we have? There are many different speed services. One is something called Azure text to speech. Azure text to speech. Then after that, we have another service called Azure speech to text. And so on like that. There are many speech related services as well. Moving on to our third category, which is vision services. So what all vision services do we have in Azure? There are many vision related services. I will just mention few of them over here. So you have something called Azure AI computer vision. Then you have something called Azure AI. Base detection and so on like that. There are many, many vision related services over here. OK, moving on to our fourth and last category, which is decision services. So what all decision services do we have in Azure? There are many decision related services. I'll just mention uh, some of them over here. So we have something called Azure AI content moderator. OK, I repeat. We have something called Azure AI. Content moderator. Then we have Azure AI anomaly detector, Azure AI personalizer, and so on. Like that, we have many, many services. We'll dive into each one of these services that I have mentioned over here. We'll see what do these services actually do, and we'll not only cover the theory, we'll also see how to practically use each of these services over here. Okay, so today we'll go ahead. And we'll understand about each of these services that are mentioned over here. I repeat, there are many other services as well that are offered by Azure, but they are outside the scope of our webinar, so we won't discuss about them. Today, we'll only discuss about these services that are mentioned in front of your screen. All right, so let's go ahead. And before going ahead, I will just do a revision of what all things we have learned up till now. And let me look at the chat. If you have any doubt whatsoever, you can mention your doubts in the chat as well. OK, fine. So Mohammed has a question over here. Mohammed says, does generative AI fall into one of these four? Yes, generative AI falls into something called decision service. OK, so yes. It does fall into one of these four categories. Any AI service Azure offered by Azure will fall into one of these categories only. There are only four categories of services that Azure offers. First is language services, second speech services, third vision services, fourth decision services. All right, let's go ahead. And before going ahead, let me do a quick revision of everything we have spoken up till now. So first we started by understanding the basics of AI, right? So the first thing that we learned is what is AI? So we know that AI is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get inference from the data. Second is to get prediction from the data. So that is the first thing that we learned. After that, we learned that in order to get inferences and predictions from the data, we need to use something called a AI model. So what is a AI model? A AI model is nothing but a statistical representation of a real world process. In simple words, we are trying to use statistics or mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world. And then we learn that in order to build any AI model in the world, we will need some data. Now there are different types of data that you can use and based on different types of data, you will be able to build different different types of AI models. But that is a topic for another day. Uh, for now, you just need to understand these three things over here. First, what is AI? Second, what is AI model? And third, what is the prerequisite for building any AI model? After that, we went ahead and we tried to dive into our main topic of today, which is to learn how you can use AI for your, uh, so sorry, how you can use Azure for your AI needs. So Azure does offer many AI services. There are two types of AI services that it provides. First is pre-built AI models. Second is custom models. Today we'll only be focusing on pre-built AI models. Now these pre-built AI models are divided into four categories. First is 
language services second speech services third vision services and fourth decision services now in each one of these categories what all different services do we have to be exact let's understand it so in language services in this category we have many uh, services first is azure ai language second is azure ai translator and so on as far as the second category is concerned which is the speech services category there are again many services under it one is azure text to speech another is azure speech to text and so on then coming to a third category which is vision services there are again many services within this category we have azure ai computer vision and there are many other services as well moving on to our fourth category which is decision services category there are many services under it one is azure ai content moderator then we have azure personalizer we have azure anomaly detector and so on okay so there are many many services that are offered by azure but today we'll only be focusing on these services that we have mentioned over here there are many other ai services as well but those are outside the scope of our current webinar fine let's go ahead guys and as i said earlier we'll not only cover the theory of these services we will actually learn how to implement these services right from scratch okay so the only prerequisite for this webinar is that you have a good enough understanding of python programming language if you have then this webinar will be very very easy for you if you do not don't worry maybe you won't understand the code, code in detail but you will definitely understand the logic behind the code okay so i will before writing the code i'll be explaining the logic why i'm writing that code okay fine so i repeat the only prerequisite for this webinar is to is that you have good enough understanding of python programming language nothing else fine let's go ahead guys and let's dive into each of these services in detail let's start with our first service which is azure ai language and before i go ahead and dive into each one of these services i'll just have a look into the chat if you have any doubt whatsoever please let me know i'll just scroll through the chat if you have any doubt please let me know guys if there is any doubt whatsoever please let me know can we get notes yes somia you will get notes and i guess chetali will be able to help you out in that regard as to what will be the medium in which uh, they will send you the notes okay so we will definitely get the notes all right fine so let's go ahead and as i said guys we'll be diving into each one of these services in detail we'll not only cover the theory but we'll also understand how to practically use the services that are mentioned over here on the screen let's start with our first service which is azure ai language okay so over here in my notes i will just add a new page saying azure ai language okay so let's go ahead and let's dive into it now what is this azure ai language all about so let's go ahead and let's understand it in detail over here okay so what is this azure ai language so it is nothing but a service that provides it is nothing but a service that provides i will just zoom in over here so you can see it properly so it is nothing but a service that provides nlp features for understanding i repeat it is nothing but a service that provides nlp features by nlp i mean natural language processing features to understand and analyze text to understand and analyze text okay so azure ai language is nothing but a service that provides nlp features for understanding and analyzing text now there are many things that you can do over here with the help of this service okay uh, so let me go ahead and let me mention the features over here so where you can apply this service let me go ahead and let me mention some of the features so you can use it to detect uh, sensitive information from a text so let's say um, there is a text that you are sending over a email and uh, you want a feature in that 
uh, email provider that okay uh, if at all there is any aadhar card number being shared or if at all there is any pan card number being shared then immediately let me know okay so if you want to detect such sensitive information you can do that and we'll be seeing today how to actually do it right from scratch okay so one feature is that detecting sensitive sensitive information such as aadhar card pan card number if you are from usa uh, then equivalent of aadhar card would be something like social security number okay so one feature is that what is the second feature so second feature is you can extract uh main topics and main phrases okay second is that you can extract main topics and main phrases so let's say you have a long piece of text and from it you want to let's say summarize uh, the entire text so you can use azure ai language uh, service for doing that okay uh, then a uh, third feature could be to classify your uh, document into one or more categories to classify your document into one or more categories okay now usually in order to do this we usually have some person in our company uh, who handles all the important documents for example in my company we have uh, a person who handles all the uh, materials that are used in our lectures okay and that person basically then classifies the document into different different categories for example if it's a webinar then uh, they will make sure that okay all of these materials are in that webinar folder if it's not a webinar if it's a full fledged lecture of 7 to 8 days okay then they will make sure that the materials for those lectures are in a separate folder and so on so classifying documents currently in many of the companies is being done manually okay by people uh, but instead of doing manually you can use azure ai language service to do that as well okay and there are many other features that you can use there are many other features for which you can use azure ai language service okay so let's go ahead and now that we have a brief overview of azure ai language service let's understand how to implement it so today what we'll be doing is we'll be understanding how to detect sensitive information from text using azure ai language service so let me go to uh, the portal over here of azure okay i have a account in azure so i'll just go ahead and open up that account here we go and what i will do now is i will just go ahead and uh, i will try to create this service called language service so let me search over here language service and here it is here you can see i'll just highlight it for you over here under the services section we see that there is one service called language service so i'll just click on it to open it up and uh, i'll just go ahead and create a new service over here previously i have created one service already here i'll create one more for this webinar right from scratch let me create it and here i will just fill in the necessary details i'll create a new resource group for you although i have a resource group in azure already created let me create a new one let me call it ai webinar okay and let me give this service a name i will just say um sample language okay let me select a pricing tier i will select uh, the available one over here and fine so all the necessary information i have just entered and now we'll just go ahead and create this service it will take a few seconds to review and it will prompt me once again that if you are okay with all of the information that we have entered we can go ahead and create the service now so let's go ahead and let's create the service and it will take around 20 30 seconds or so and this service should be created once this service is created i will show you how to use this service for 
the task that I want to do. What is the task? My task is to detect sensitive information like let's say social security number or phone number from a given text. OK, so we'll be seeing how to do this task by using this service called Azure AI language service. The service is getting created, so we'll just wait for a few seconds over here. We'll just wait for a few seconds. Usually it takes around half a minute or so. OK, fine, the service is created, so I'll just go ahead and uh, move on to. That service over here, it was sample language service and here we go. Fine, my service is created over here. Now how to use this service for my task? My task is to detect sensitive information from text. So let's go ahead and let's understand. How to do this over here, OK, so from scratch. We'll try to understand it in detail. OK, let's go ahead and let's understand it. Before that, if anybody has any doubt up till now, please let me know. Up till now, what we have done is we have just covered the AI basics. And after covering AI basics, first we understood what is AI. Second, we understood what is AI model. And third, we understood the prerequisite for building an AI model. Then we went ahead and we understood that in Azure, there are many AI services that you can use. Those AI services are divided into two types. First is pre-built AI models, second custom models. Today we'll be only talking about pre-built AI models. Now within pre-built AI models, there are four categories. First is language services category, second speech services category, third vision services category, and fourth decision services category. So within language services category, there are many services. We are starting off with our first service called Azure AI language and using this service. I'm trying to do one task over here. What task I'm trying to do? I'm trying to detect sensitive information from a piece of text. OK, so we'll be seeing how to do this right from scratch. So. Um, all I need is uh, that you should have some basic understanding of how Python programming language works. OK, if you have basic understanding, uh, then um, this webinar will be very easy for you. If you do not have basic understanding, no issues. Uh, you might not understand the full code, but you will definitely understand the logic behind the code. OK, fine. So let's go ahead and. Let's start from scratch over here. So what I will do is I'll go to a folder. And uh, I want to write some code over here, so I will open up Visual Studio to write code. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me open up Visual Studio to write code. OK, here I have done it. I have opened up Visual Studio to write code. And what I'll be doing is here we'll be creating a new file. So let me create a new file over here. Let me just go ahead, create a new file. I will just say. Detect. Sensitive dot py. OK, fine. So let's go ahead and let's write the code from scratch over here. So what is the first thing that we'll be doing? Okay. So we'll be understanding from scratch, guys. Each code I will explain one by one. OK, so don't worry. So guys, the first thing that you need that we need to do is we need to set up the credentials so that my local machine can get access to the Azure portal. OK. So we will divide our code into multiple parts. To be precise, we'll be dividing our code into seven parts. OK, so we'll be dividing our code into seven parts. So let me write it down in my notes over here. I'll just go ahead, write it down in my notes. So we'll be dividing our code into seven parts. So first we will try to set up the credentials. OK. So setting up credentials. That is the first thing that we'll be doing and total will be uh, our code will be divided into seven parts. Our first part is to set up the credentials. So let's go ahead and let's do that over here. So how will we be able to set up the credentials? So guys, the first thing that I need, I need two things basically. First thing that I need is key. OK, 
so my azure ai language services uh, service has been created but there is a key that i need to use in order to gain access to it so the here there is an option to manage those keys so let me go ahead and let me click on that option and here you can see there are uh, two keys available you can use either of them over here so let me use the first one and i'll just make sure that i store my key in this variable the second thing that i need is i need something called endpoint endpoint is nothing but the link where i want to post a request so this is the endpoint over here this is the link where i want to post my request so over here let me go ahead and let me store my endpoint over here in this file okay so guys our first part is done okay as i said our code will be divided into seven parts so our part 1 is done okay now let's go ahead and let's move on to part 2 so what is part 2 over here so guys in part 2 what we'll be doing is we'll be importing some of the important libraries that we need to use for this task okay so i'll write it down in my notes that part 2 is to import the important libraries all right so let's go ahead and let's see how to implement this so over here what i'll be doing is um, i'll be writing some code that imports text analysis client from azure dot ai dot text analysis analytics from this what i will do is i will try to import text analysis client so let me go ahead and let me import text analysis sorry text analytics client so let me go ahead and let me import so i have uh, written the first line correctly let me go ahead and let me import the second library as well so i'll just go ahead and write down the code over here let me go ahead and do that and here we go i am almost done okay so what i have done i have written some code that imports text analysis analytics client from azure.ai.analytics which is the client class for interact with the for interacting with the text analytics api second i have imported azure cree credential from azure.core.credentials now this is imported to handle authentication with the azure service using the api key okay so this is the second part a second part is done now let's go ahead and let's move on to our third part so we'll go ahead and we'll move on to our third part now so what is the third part third part is nothing but writing our authentication logic okay so let's go ahead and let's write our authentication logic over here so let me write it down in my notes that now we are moving on to our third part which is to write authentication logic okay fine so let's go ahead and do it so here what i'll be doing is using this class using this class over here what i'll be doing is i will try to insert my key okay so this class expects a key so we'll go ahead and we'll try to insert it fine and with this object of the class will be created so let me go ahead and let me save the object of the class over here in a variable the second thing that i will do over here is i will call this another class okay that i have imported already let me call that other class as well and that class what it will do is it will actually connect to the ai service that i want to use okay so guys it expects two main things first is the endpoint first is the endpoint so my endpoint is stored in this variable over here so the same variable i will enter okay same variable i have entered second it expects the credential second thing it expects the credential so my credential is stored in this variable over here so that same variable i'll mention in my code okay fine now once my connection is done that connection also i will store it in this variable let me store that connection over here i'll just go ahead and store that connection fine here we go we are almost done and in fact this connection i might have to use again and again 
so it's better if I put it inside of a function. So let me go ahead and let me put this inside of a function. I'm doing this just because I feel I might have to, uh, you know, connect to my AI service again and again. So it's better if I put it into a function over here. Okay. Fine, I'm almost done. And fine. So my third part is done. As I told you earlier, total will be having seven parts to the code. Out of the seven parts, my three parts are done. Okay. So here, what I have done, guys, here I have created a function. In the third part, I have created a function that handles the creation and authentication of the text analytics client. Now, this variable over here, the one that I have highlighted, basically contains Azure Cree credential object, which is created with the API key. Then I have this second variable over here, the one that I have highlighted. Now, this variable contains text analytics client object, which is instantiated using the endpoint URL and the credentials. And then at last, this function is returning the authenticated client. Okay, so third part done. Now let's go ahead and let's move on to the fourth part over here. So we'll go ahead, move on to the fourth part. In the fourth part, what I do, what do I want to do? I want to create the client instance. Okay. In the fourth part, I'll be basically creating the client instance. So let's go ahead and do it. And let's see what is the code for doing the same thing over here. So for doing it, all I need to do is I need to call this function over here. And when I call this function, automatically my fourth part will be done. Automatically over here, my fourth part will be done. And that's it. My fourth part was to create the client instance and we have done that over here. Now let's go ahead and let's move on to our fifth part. Okay. Now in the fifth part, what we'll be doing is we'll be writing the logic. I, I will write it down in my notes over here for your reference. In the fifth part, we'll be writing the logic to detect to detect sensitive information. Like let's say social security number, other card, phone number, and so on. Okay, fine. So let's go ahead and do it. This is the fifth part over here. So let's write the code for the fifth part as well. So we are we'll be writing our code for the fifth part. So now what I'll be doing over here is uh, in fact, I feel even this fifth part I will need to use again and again. So let me create it inside of a function. So I'll go ahead. Create it inside of a function. I'll say personal identity information. Recognition. OK, this is the name of my function. What it will take is it will take my connected client. OK, my authenticated client over here. And once it takes my authenticated client, what I want to do is uh, I want to have some basic text. So let me have some basic text. OK, I will have I can have uh, any length of text over here. OK, small text, big text. OK, so I'll be having two sentences to be exact. So in the first sentence, I will say that, uh, OK, let me take a student's name over here and using that student's name. Let me mention something. OK, so I will say that Soumya has a SSN. SSN is short form for social security number. OK, so it's um, you can say a equivalent of Aadhaar card in India. OK, in USA we have social security number. OK, so let's say Soumya's social security number is 859-980987. OK, and let me have another sentence as well over here. I will say that okay let me take another person's information from the chat so what other student do we have apart from somia we have abhishek right so we are let me take abhishek's name so i'll just mention in my code that abhishek's phone number abhishek's phone number is so I'm just giving some random number over here. We know that we need to have a 10 digit, 10 digit phone number. So just a random phone number. Okay, of 10, 
10 digits. All right, fine. This is done. Now what I want to do over here is I want to get a response from my AI service. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. So using my connect or uh, using my authenticated client, what I will do is I will try to get a response from the AI service in order to do this. You need to use a method called recognize underscore P double I underscore entities. Make sure you write the name correctly of the method over here. And to this method, you need to pass two things. First is the text on which you want to detect sensitive information. Second, you need to mention the language in which the text is written. So currently my language is written in English, so I will write E A N over here. Fine. Then after writing this code, I will get some response. OK, I'll get some response from my AI service. What I want to do next is. I want to just print that response over here. So what I will do is I will just go ahead and uh, write code that will print the uh, response in my desired format. So, OK, so I'll just go ahead and do it. I will just say. Because I will get a lot of lines over here, so I'll just be using a for loop to go through each one of those lines that I'm getting in my response. OK, and. I will just say that if there is no error, then just go ahead and. Save uh, the responses in the form of a list. OK, and that list I will just reference by a variable over here. Fine. And after that, what I want to do is I just want to print all the elements in the list. So let me go ahead and let me print all the elements over here in my list. Let me print it and here what I will do is I will say redacted text. I'll just write the code over here and once we uh, have the output in front of us, you will understand what this code is actually doing. So let me go ahead and let me write the code. One by one, we'll try to understand what is the logic behind this. OK. Once I have the redacted text in front of me, uh, then what I want to do is the actual uh, information will be available inside of this key value pair called entities okay and inside that key value pair i will have the actual information so i'll just go ahead and print that information as it is fine so i will say entity And what is my entity? I'll just print it over here. What do I want to print the text inside that entity? And after this, after printing out the entity, I want to print the category in which that uh, sensitive information belongs to. OK. So let me print out the category as well. I and I want to print it after giving some tab. So let me print out the category over here. I'll just go ahead and do that. Now, if you are familiar with Python programming language, you would know the syntaxes behind each one of these lines. OK, for those of you who don't know, just remember that all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make sure that the result that I get from my AI service is printed in the order that I want it to. OK, nothing else. Fine. And once we have the output in front of us, you will actually understand why this code was written by me. Fine, just uh, three lines more to go. OK, so in the third last line, what I want to do is I want to print the confidence score that how much confidence you have in the detected sensitive information, whether it is 60%, 70% confidence and so on. OK, so what is your confidence score? How confident my AI service is? Uh, let me go ahead and 
write my code. Two more lines over here. So in the second last line, what I will be doing is. Um, let me print the length, but length is not required. So fine. Let me just stop over here and now we'll try to. Uh, move on to our next part. OK, so let's go ahead and let's move on to our next part. So guys, our fifth part was what? Our fifth part was to write uh, our logic. To recognize sensitive information, right? So there, what did we do? There, the first thing that I did over here is I first had a list of strings that potentially contain sensitive information. Then what I did was I called the recognize underscore P double I underscore entities method of the client to detect personal inf uh, entities in the text that I have and the language was set to English. Then what I did was I filtered out the uh, text where an error occurred during processing. OK, so if at all an error is occurring, then I'm just filtering it out. OK, after that I went into part six. So actually this is part six. So part five was done over here. Then we went on to part six. So in part six, what we are trying to do is we are trying to process and display the results. OK, so in part six, what we are trying to do is we are trying to process. And display the results. OK, so here for each text in that I get in my result or for each document that I get in the result, what I'm trying to do first, I'm trying to print the redacted text, which is nothing but the text of the document with uh, personal entities redacted. OK, so redacted text, I, I repeat. So if at all you have uh, personal information in that text, so in this redacted text, you have you will have the entire text minus the personal information. So let's say I have a text saying my Aadhaar card number is 859. So in this redacted text, you will have. A new text saying that OK, my Aadhaar card number is, but that Aadhaar card number, which is 859, that will be redacted. OK, so first I wanted to print that redacted text. Second, what I wanted to do is I wanted to print out what actual sensitive information did I find, whether it was phone number, Aadhaar card number, social security number, whatever. OK, then second, I wanted to print out the category of that sensitive information, like whether it was Aadhaar card number, phone number, which category it belonged to. OK, so first I wanted to print out the actual information, then the category of that sensitive information. Then third, I wanted to print out the confidence score that how confident my AI service is in um, uh, detecting these sensitive information, whether it is 70% confident, 80% confident, what it is. Okay. Then at last, guys, okay, my seventh part is to execute the recognition logic. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's move on to our seventh part over here. So we'll go ahead, move on to our seventh part, which is to execute this recognition logic. So let's go ahead and let's execute this function over here. So I'll just go ahead, execute the function. This function takes one parameter, so I'll pass a value to that parameter, and that's it. Now over here we have written code, and let's run this code over here. So my code is in this file called detect sensitive dot PA. Let me run it, but I guess there is some. Error over here. I have solved that error and now I'm ready to run this code. OK. Let me go ahead and let me run it. And. Here we go. Fine, so you can see over here in my text there was social security number, so it has detected the entity that OK, the entity is so on and so forth. OK, then it has printed out the category of that entity. It says that it is US social security number. Then how confident it is in its prediction. So it is 85% confident. OK, your confidence score will always be between 0 to 1. In order to convert it to percentage, all you have to do is multiply this by 100. So currently uh, you can say that the service is 85% confident. OK, fine. And uh, some of you are asking about that redacted text, right? So here you can see what exactly I mean by redacted text. So it is the same text that you had earlier. Is this that sensitive information has been blurred? 
okay sensitive information has been blurred fine so like this a uh, social security number has been detected then there was another thing called phone number that has been detected okay and so on so like this if it feels that there are certain uh, sensitive information like for example name of a person sometimes uh, you do not want name of a person to be you know shared in the document so like this it will just highlight those um, sensitive information for you and then you have to decide that uh, do you want to keep this sensitive information in a document or do you want to remove it fine so like this it has detected three entities first social security number second name and third phone number okay fine so this was our first hands on exercise so what we did was we used our first service called azure ai language service and using it we tried to perform our first hands on exercise over here up till here if there is any doubt in the code then please let me know okay to recap everything first we try to understand the basics of ai so we try to understand what is ai we learn that ai is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes first is to get inferences from the data second is to get predictions from data how do we do that how do we get inferences and predictions from data we do that by using something called a ai model what is a ai model it is just a statistical representation of a real world process to be simple uh, your uh, ai model just uses statistics or mathematics to simulate what would happen in the real world and in order to build any ai model in the world you have you need to have one prerequisite which is data without data you cannot build any ai model depending on different different types of data you will be able to build different different types of ai models okay after covering ai basics then we went on to our main concept of today which is to learn how you can use azure for your ai needs so azure offers many ai services which are divided into two types pre built ai services and custom ai services today we'll only talk about pre built ai services within this pre built ai services there are four categories first was language services category second speech services category third was vision services category fourth was decision services category okay fine uh, then we talked about different different services that are available inside these categories okay and i have mentioned some of those services over here and uh, we had also mentioned that will not only be learning the theory behind these services will also be learning how to practically implement them so we have learned how to practically implement our first service of today which is azure ai language service any doubt in this service then please let me know i'll just scroll through the chat i might have missed out reading the chat so let me go ahead and let me uh read the chat over here uh ha huh. sham has a doubt over here sham says are we going to cover anomaly detection from decision making no uh, so yes anomaly detection is part of this fourth category but we won't cover it in this webinar okay if we get time uh, then surely but it's outside the scope of our current webinar so first we'll try to cover whatever in this scope if at all we get time we'll cover it but uh, it is outside the scope of our current webinar we'll see if we get time or not okay ha huh. uh, abhishek says i am looking to find out how to retrieve microsoft lab credential okay so abhishek buddy have you created the service uh, let me know azure ai language services created or you want me to again explain how to create let me know i will, I will again explain so have you created the language service or not created not created okay so i will again explain to you how to create it so guys in order to create it what you have to do is go to your azure portal abhishek do you have a azure account acha no access to lap laptop 
Okay, fine. So I hope Abhishek, you have a Azure account. If not, please create one. And I will again explain how to create language service. All you have to do is go to the search bar and search for language. Here you can see there is an option to create a language service. And uh, I'll just go ahead and I'll click on that option over here. And uh, once you click on that option to create a service, you will arrive at this form over here. You just have to fill the form, that's all. So first it will ask you to select the resource group over here. So we'll go ahead and select one. Okay, then the name of this uh, resource that you are creating, okay, or the name of the service that you are creating. So and the same thing. Okay, so any name you can give over here. Then the pricing tier. Okay, uh, guys, uh, since I've already created one free service, that's why I'm not getting another option over here to create a to select free tier. Okay, but in your case, you will get option to select free tier. In my case, I've already created services na, before this. That's why I'm not getting that option because one free service is in use currently. So I'm not able to create one more free service because one I've already created it and it's in use currently in my portal. Okay. But in your case, since you guys have not created any AI service at all, you will get option to select free tier. Okay. So no charge will be, um, you know, uh, given to you. You won't have to pay any money whatsoever. Fine. But in my case, I'm not getting that option, so it's fine. After that, you just have to click on click on this option over here called review press create. And once you do that, that service will be created for you. I'm not clicking on that option because I've already created that service. Okay. But this is how you can create that service. Once it is created, it will look something like this. Okay. This is the home page of that service. Now, coming to your main question, how to access those credentials? So there are two ways, Abhishek. First is to click on this option over here called Manage Keys. Second is to click on this button over here called Keys and Endpoint. Both the places will give you the exact same output. Okay, so you can use either one of these two options over here. You can either click on this link and you will arrive at this page. Or if you do not want to click on that link, then you can directly click on this button over here and you will arrive at the same page. Okay, so this is where you will actually see your credentials and you only need two credentials. First is your key, so you can go ahead and copy your key. Second is your endpoint, so you only need two things and that is mentioned in our code over here. You can see key and endpoint. Okay. Make sure that your key is never ever uh, displayed publicly. Here I do not have an option uh, to hide it. Okay, so after this webinar, I will delete my um, service altogether, but make sure that your key is never ever displayed publicly. Asha, this part already understood. Fine. Any other doubt? Yes, hi, Shah. Any doubt you have? Let me know. So I will repeat the parts over here. I'll just walk through uh, the code over here one by one. So first, what we did was we set up our credentials. Okay. Second thing that we did was we imported all the necessary libraries. Third, we built an authentication function. Uh, so we wrote some code that will actually help us to authenticate. But in order to execute it, obviously we'll have to call the function. That is what we did in part four. Then in part five, we built our logic that will help us to recognize sensitive information. Okay. Then in part six, once we detected the sensitive information, we just tried to display the results. And in part seven, uh, we just tried to execute the function that was responsible for part five and part six. So part five and part six was present instead of a function. In order for it to work, we have to call that function. That That is exactly what we did in part seven. So that is our code, guys, over here. Uh, how to connect? Uh, so Sham, 
uh, all you need to do is just these two lines. Apart from that, nothing else. Apart from that, you don't have to do anything to make them in sync. I have not done anything else. Can we use any other platform? Yes. Uh, some of you guys might be familiar with Jupyter Notebook. You can use that. Some of you guys might be familiar with Google Colab Notebook. You can use that. Okay. And in order to sync your coding platform with Azure Portal, just these two lines are required. Nothing else. I have highlighted those two lines over here in your screen. Fine. So part one is done, guys. I hope there are no doubts in part one. If there are any doubts, uh, then please let me know. OK. Fine. So our lab one is done. Now let's go ahead and let's move on to another service, guys. So our one service is over. OK, now we'll move on to our second service, which is Azure AI Translator. OK, so let's go ahead and let's talk about Azure AI Translator. So guys, using Azure AI Translator, basically we can uh, convert one text, which is let's say in English language to any other language. So you can co convert, uh, let's say Hindi to Marathi language. You can convert a text from French to Spanish language and so on. OK. So we'll be using the service exactly for that. So let's go ahead and let's talk about Azure AI Translator service. So let's go ahead and now we'll talk about Azure AI Translator service. So I will be creating a new Python file over here that will help me for this purpose. So let's go ahead and do that. And let me name this as uh, translate. language.py okay and uh, one by one we'll try to understand the coding logic behind this okay so what actual code you need to write all of that will understand so don't worry so we'll start absolutely from scratch and uh, fine so let's go ahead so guys as i mentioned azure ai translator service is basically used to convert text of one language to another so you can use it to convert um, hindi uh, text from hindi language to marathi language or text from uh, english language to spanish language and so on okay so we'll be going ahead and we'll be seeing how to do exactly that so let's go ahead and let's see how to do it so in order to do this guys i will need to create this service which is Azure AI Translator service. So let me go to the home page of my portal and let me search translator service over here. Let me look for translator service. Here we go. And here it is allowing me to create the translator service. So let me go ahead and let me create it. Okay. And uh, here, uh, once I click on the button to create that service, it just gives me this form which I have to fill over here. Okay. So, first the subscription details, then the resource group in which you want that service to belong to. Ideally, uh, if you want your services to interact with each other, they should belong to the same resource group. But even if they're in different resource group, it's fine. But ideally, they should be in the same resource group. It gives you much more advantage. But fine, we are not going into Azure basics. We are focusing on AI for today. So let's talk about AI only. All right, let's go ahead. And I'll just give a name to this new service or this new resource that I'm creating. Let me give it a name over here called Translate Language. OK. Let me select a pricing tier. Uh, as I said, guys, I have already created one translator service using free tier. OK, that's why it is not giving me option to create another translator service using the same free tier because currently I have one translator service which is online uh, using the free tier. OK, so it's not giving me that option, but in your case, you will get that option. OK, so you don't have to worry. You can use these AI services for free. And let me create it over here. I think all the details are correct. After reviewing them, I'm just going ahead and creating the service.
Okay. And you can see the services created over here. Fine. So let's go ahead. And before using this service, guys, so I need to install a library. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me install two libraries actually. One is called request library. And another is called UUID library. Okay. So I'll just go ahead and install these libraries over here. In my case, they are already installed. So that's why I get this message saying requirement already satisfied. But in your case, you will have to install it. Okay. So in your case, you will see a download process getting started or install process getting started. Fine. In my case, I've already installed them earlier. All right. So once installing these two libraries over here, I'll just go ahead and mention it in my notes over here for you. So first we need to install these li two libraries requests and UUID. These will be like these will be the libraries that will actually help us for our code. Fine. Let's go ahead now. Now the code that we'll be writing guys will be divided into some parts to be specific. It will be divided into seven parts over here. OK, so let's go ahead and let's understand our code. I'll just zoom in to my Chrome browser so you can see what I'm typing on it. Fine, so part one. So guys, part one is nothing but importing our necessary libraries. OK, so we'll just go ahead and do that. Let's import our necessary libraries. So what we'll be doing? is will be importing request library. OK. We'll be importing request library. Then we'll be importing UUID library. Then we'll be importing JSON library. JSON library was uh, automatically installed in Visual Studio. That's why I didn't have to separately install it. OK, even in your case, it will be automatically installed. But for request and UUID, you will have to install them separately like I showed you earlier. Fine. After that, let's go ahead. Now our part one is done. Here what we have done. We have imported request library, UUID library, JSON library. OK, the request library is for sending HTTP request. UUID library is for generating unique identifiers and JSON library is for JSON processing. OK, part one is done. Now let's go ahead and let's move on to part two now. So we'll go ahead and move on to part two, which is to configure the translator service. So let's go ahead and let's configure our translator service. So here what we'll be doing is first we'll be mentioning our key for the service. So let me go ahead and let me mention my key. I can get it from my Azure portal over here. So under keys and endpoint section, I can get my keys. So let me go and copy it, paste it in my code. OK, the second thing that I need to do is I need to mention my endpoint. Which is nothing but a link where I want to send my request. OK, so my endpoint is also mentioned over here. If I go to the overview tab, maybe my endpoint will be mentioned. Is it mentioned over here directly? Uh, let me check if it's not. Ha, huh, yes, yes, here. Click here to view endpoints. Ha, huh, yes, here it is. Endpoints. It was there over here. Sorry, I missed it. Okay, so let me copy it and let me paste it over here. Fine. And then the third thing that I need to do over here is I need to mention the location. OK, which is the region where your Azure, Azure service is deployed. OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention the location over here. So I, I can get my location from the portal. In this scenario, it is East East US. Fine. So with this, my part two is done. Now let's go ahead and let's move on to part three. So we'll go ahead and we'll move on to part three, which is to set up the translation request. OK, so I'll write it down in my notes over here. That part three is to set up. The translation request. OK. 
So here I will be doing three things. Okay, here I will be doing three things. First, I will be mentioning the path for the translation API endpoint. Okay, so let me mention the path. So after going to this endpoint, uh, I want my code to go to this path called translate. Okay, so this endpoint after this endpoint, I want it to go to this part called translate. So that is what I have mentioned over here. Okay. Uh, after that, I want my full URL. So my full URL will be combination of my endpoint plus path. Okay. So let me go ahead and let me construct my full URL. Let me construct my full URL. Constructed path. Or I should say constructed URL. Which will be equal to the endpoint. Plus the new path that I have mentioned. OK. Fine, so you must be uh, seeing this in many websites, right? For example, let's say you want to buy something from Amazon. Let's say you want to buy mobiles. Then uh, the entire path is amazon.com slash mobiles. If you want to buy laptops, it will be amazon.com slash laptops. Similarly here, I want to um, use, I want to pass translation requests. For that, I have to take my endpoint slash translate. OK, if you want to do any other request, you will do endpoint slash name of that request and so on. Here, the name of my request is translate. Fine. So as I mentioned earlier, we'll be doing three things. First, the path. Second, my constructed URL, which is combination of endpoint and the new path that I have mentioned. And third is the parameters for my API call. OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention my parameters. So I'll just go ahead and do it. First, I'll mention the API version. Uh, I want to use 3.0 version over here. The second thing that I'll be doing is I'll be mentioning from which language do I want to translate. So I'll say from English language. OK, then the third thing that I'll mention is to which language I want to translate. So I will say. Uh, Marathi language. So for Marathi, I will write MR. OK, and it Italian language, so I will write IT. OK, fine. And uh, that's it. Part three done. Now what I will do is I will go ahead and move on to part four in my code. So let me go ahead. Let me move on to part four. Which is to mention the headers. For the HTTP request. Mentioning the headers for my HTTP request. So let me go ahead and do it. Part four. So here let me men, uh, let me set up the necessary HTTP headers. OK, I'll just go ahead and do that over here. So I'll just set up the necessary HTTP headers. Let me specify it one by one. Now in my case, I remember the headers by heart. In your case, if you do not remember the headers, you just have to go through the documentation page and you will get uh, all of this information over here on a single page. OK, you don't have to go anywhere. Just go to the documentation page and you will find all of this information over here ready. OK. So over here, let me mention the header. Make sure that there is no spelling mistake over here. If you have doubt over the spelling mistake or anything, just refer the documentation. OK, and you will be able to find it. In my case, I remember it, so I'm just uh, writing it as it is. If you don't remember, just refer the documentation. Fine. So my key is saved in this variable. Let me mention that over here. Then the second thing that is required in my header is subscription region. So let me go ahead and let me mention the subscription region over here. So subscription region. So have I saved my region earlier? Yes, I have saved my region, so I'll just go ahead and mention it. Fine. 
third thing is content type okay uh, which is basically specifying that okay the request that i am sending to the endpoint is being sent in which format so currently i am sending it in dictionary format or to be specific i am sending it in json format okay so in content type i uh, will just say that okay this code that i have written in this code the request that i am sending is uh, and the values in the request are in json type okay uh, fine then one more thing i need which is something called uh, uh, client id now it can be any random client id over here but for formality we will need it so let me go ahead and let me mention it over here so i'll just go ahead and mention it uh, i can mention any you know random client id what i will do over here is i'll be using this library to generate a unique id okay so let me go ahead and let me use this library over here and whatever id i get i want it to convert it to string fine that's it and with this my part 4 is done now let me go ahead and let me move on to my part 5 over here so we'll go ahead move on to my part 5 remember there are seven parts out of which four parts are done now we are moving on to our part 5 which is to mention the request body so let me go ahead and let me mention the request body so i'll just go ahead write the code for it for part 5 here what i will be doing is i will be passing my text that i want to convert it to another language okay so let me go ahead and let me specify it so i just want to convert one sentence that's why i'm just using one dictionary if you want to convert more sentences you can use more dictionaries over here but i just want to cover one sentence okay so i'll be just be saying hello how are you okay just this simple sentence you can write any sentence whatsoever fine so here what i am doing is i am mentioning the content that i want to be translated remember that the content needs to be encapsulated in a list of dictionaries here it contains one dictionary okay uh, and obviously if it's a dictionary it will need a key right so let me have a key uh, called text okay fine and then the value whatever i have mentioned uh, is the one that will be actually translated to another language all right part 5 done okay uh, is there a spelling mistake in any of my previous codes any spelling mistake over here it why am i getting a issue over here sorry i wanted to convert it to multiple languages right so i will have to put it inside some collection either list tuple something like that so i'm using a list all right part 5 done now let's go ahead guys and let's move on to part 6 so in part 6 what i'll be doing is i'll be actually sending the request okay let me write it down in my notes that will actually be sending the request and after this lab guys we'll take a short break so don't worry okay i'll just cover uh, this lab over here i re i repeat there are seven parts out of which five parts are done two more parts are left and after that we'll take a short break so don't worry but let me cover these remaining two parts so the second last part over here is to actually send the request so let me go ahead and let me write the code over here so i want to send the request where to this url that i had constructed okay then what are the parameters that i want to send uh do i have my parameters yes so i'll mention those parameters over here then the third thing that is required are my headers so my headers are stored in this variable over here the one that i have highlighted so let me specify that variable one second uh after that just one last thing which is 
the actual text that I want to be translated, which is specified in this variable over here called body. So I'll just go ahead and mention that variable. Fine. And uh, once I get a request over here, let me save that request in a variable. Let me go ahead and do that. Now, once I send a request, then from that request, I'll get a response. Now that response I will get from this method called JSON method. OK, and with the help of that method, I'll get a response from the Azure portal. And that's it. My part six is done. So in part six, what did, what did we do first? First, we tried to perform a HTTP POST request to the constructed URL with the specified parameters, headers and body. Next, we try to get a response from the API call and that response we are just storing in this variable over here. OK. Fine, part six done. One last part left, so let me go ahead and let me talk about that part, which is to print the response. So let me go ahead and do it. Let me go ahead and let me print the response over here. Fine. So uh, currently my response is getting obtained in JSON format. So in part five, I just want to print it in a more desirable format. So what I will do is. Using the JSON library, which I had imported earlier, here it is using it. I'll try to call this method over here called dumps. And what I want to convert is the actual response, which is in JSON format. I want to convert it in normal format. OK. And. Uh, since it is in JSON or in dictionary format, I would say uh, the keys in it, I want it to sort. So let me go ahead and let me write the code for that. OK, and uh, fine, I feel this is enough. Let me go ahead and let me. Check, let me run the code over here. Let's see if it works correctly or not. Let me run the code inside of this file. And here I have a error. OK, in which line In line 31. OK, so here. There was a spelling mistake in the code. After correcting the spelling mistake, let's see now it works or not. And OK, here definitely the text is getting converted. What I want to do is let me display it in a more readable format. OK, so I will just do some changes in my code. I will say ensure sky equal to false. And if I do that, you can see that uh, now it's much more readable. Also, I want more indentation over here between the text that I'm getting in my output. So let me go ahead and let me specify it. OK, now you can see it's much more readable. OK, uh, so now uh, as we wanted guys that I had a text called hello, how are you? I wanted it to convert to two languages, Marathi and Italy, and it has been converted over here. First to Marathi and second to Italian language. OK, so guys, that is how you can use the second Azure AI service. First Azure AI service that we used was uh, Azure AI language service. Second was Azure AI translator service. Any doubts in how to use these services, then please let me know. Talking about the notes, yes, you will get the notes. OK, but how to implement these two services? If there are any doubt, then please let me know. Any doubts, guys? Mohammed, Soumya, Ramesh. Clear? OK, fine. So what we'll be do, doing is uh, let's take a 15 minute break. OK, up till 6 PM and after that we'll be back and we'll be continuing our AI journey. Up till now we have only looked into two AI services. First was Azure AI language service. Second was Azure AI translator service. After the 
break, we'll be looking into more services. So let's take a 15 minute break. And after that, we'll be back. So we'll be back right at 6 p.m. OK. So let me set a timer and. In 6 p.m. we'll be back. OK, or let me. Start a timer. OK, or maybe Chetali can help over here to set a timer. Chetali, will you be setting a timer? OK, fine, I think I can do it over here. OK. So break off 15 minutes and right at 6 p.m. we'll be back guys. OK, till then I'll just keep my mic on mute. Uh, participants, uh, sir is on break for 15 minutes. Till that time, uh, we already shared a learning achievement badge. Uh, guys, go and uh, follow the step and you will get activated a uh, badge. Uh, first, you have to create a Microsoft Learn account, then you can go with the URL and you will get the activated badge. If you already done with the Microsoft Learn account, so directly you can go with the URL and you will get the badge. Uh, participants, I'm sharing again learning achievement batch on chat box. So that I go and uh, redeem your batch. I'm sharing again. Wait. Uh, I shared the batch details. Uh, go and uh, redeem your batch. In this batch, you will get all study material. Uh, whatever sir is teaching, all are included in that batch.
who are done with that uh, batches uh, so drop your message on chat box so i can see that If anybody facing problem, please drop your message so I can help you. Uh, participants who are remaining with the batch, please uh, go and uh, redeem your batch. This is very helpful. And uh, in this batch, uh, all study material are included, uh, whatever sir is teaching now. So go and uh, redeem your batch.
who are done with that please drop your message so i can uh, see that Welcome back to this session, everyone. 
now let's resume so i believe one student has mentioned in the chat to repeat the coding explanation for part 4 i believe fine let me do one thing uh, for all the parts i will repeat uh, again so let's go ahead and do that okay now i'll be repeating it for lab 2 lab 1 we have already covered earlier uh, in lab 1 we try to understand how to identify sensitive information in lab 2 what we did was we tried to convert a text from one language to another now let me repeat the explanation for each line of code over here so there was uh, we divided our code into seven parts in part 1 we imported the necessary libraries like request library uuid library json library the request library is for http requests uuid library is for generating unique identifiers and json library is for json processing then in part 2 we did three things first we stored the key for our azure uh, um, translator service second we stored our endpoint which is nothing but the base url of the translator service third we stored our location which is the region where your azure service is deployed in my scenario it was de deployed in east us region so that was part 2 in part 3 what we did was we set up the translation request there we did three things first we mentioned the extended path for the translation api endpoint then next we uh, combined the endpoint and the extended path third we mentioned the important parameters for the api call where first we mentioned the api version which in this scenario was 3.0 then we mentioned the source language which was english which basically signifies that uh, while sending a request to the api the text that i will be sending will be in english language then next i mentioned the target languages which is h uh, which is mr and it mr is for marathi it is for italian okay like this suppose instead of marathi you wanted to convert it to hindi you can mention that as well uh, the short form for hindi is hi okay so make sure you write the correct short forms if you write hin then it will not detect whether it is hindi or some other language so there are specific nicknames for these languages and you can find these nicknames in the documentation page of azure okay uh if you want the specific link later i'll provide that as well fine so that was part 3 then in part 4 what we did was we mentioned the headers for the http request so we mentioned uh, set up the necessary http headers first was our subscription key second was region third was content type so we said that the request that i, I am sending will be in json format json means dictionary okay so this is to suggest that okay my request that i am sending is in dictionary format or in json format then i needed to mention a client id okay which is nothing but uh, id for me the user you can set any id over here what i did was using a library i generated a unique id okay so this code basically generates a unique id every time so that is what i did okay uh, instead of writing this code you uh, you must be asking can you write any other id as well manually instead of using this library over here yes you can have your own id inserted manually over here that's completely fine so that was fourth part in fifth part we mentioned the content that we want to be translated which was encapsulated in a list of dictionaries here it comes with one dictionary with a key text and the english sentence that is to be translated then in part 6 what i did was first uh, i performed a http post request to the constructed url with the specified parameters headers and body second i stored the response from the api call over here then that was part 6 moving on to part 7 uh, here we have written the code to print the json response in a formatted manner using json dot jumps uh, using json dot dumps which converts the json response into a human readable string with sorted keys proper indentation and so on okay fine so that was our part uh that was all the uh, seven parts for the lab that we performed uh, 
uh, i will run it once again because this time uh, instead of marathi language i wanted to translate to hindi hindi language so let me run the code for doing that and uh, uh, now let me take a different text i will say my name is smith okay this is a different text over here this text i wanted to translate to two languages first is hindi second is uh, italian so let me do that and you will see that it will do it so first you can see it has translated it to hindi language second to italian language okay fine so okay uh, nag nagraja has a doubt over here nagraj says from where we can get these keys is it constant uh, well you can get it from the service that you have created buddy so we created this translator service right so this is the home page that you must be seeing once you create now you will see this home page then how to check your keys you just have to go to this section over here called keys and endpoint that is one option second option is to click on this link there also you will arrive at the exact same destination okay so you can use any of the two ways one is to click on this button second is to click on this link Both will do the exact same thing. Let me click on this button over here, and here it will show me the keys and all the ne other necessary stuff that is required for authentication. Okay, so here is the key. There are two keys. You can use any one of them. Both of them will work. Uh, all you need to do is just copy it. So here there is a button to copy it, and that's what I did. After copying, I just pasted it in my code over here. So you need to do the same thing for your account. Okay, this key works in my account. For your account, the service that you create will be different. I mean, you can use my key also, uh, irrespective of the accounts. Okay, uh, but what I am saying is, in your account, you will get a different key. It's not constant. That's all I am saying. But if your doubt is, can uh, you use a key generated in your friend's account? Yes, you can. If you have the key, you can use it. Okay, never ever make your key public. Okay, this is fine. I mean, this uh, service will hardly charge me anything. But uh, if you make it public, you know, other people can use it, and you can incur more cost. Fine. Uh, so Nagraj, was your doubt clear, buddy? Any other doubt? So to answer your doubt, no, it's not constant. Yes. Okay. Fine. All right, let's go ahead, guys, and let's move on to another service that Azure offers. So we have covered two already. First was Azure AI. Azure text to speech service. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll move on to Azure text to speech service. So here we'll have some written text and we'll convert it to a audio or a speech, basically. Okay. Uh, Ragra says, how the cost will be calculated? Is it per translate? Yes, it is based on two things. First, the number of calls that you make to that endpoint, and second, uh, what is the usage per endpoint? So, for example, if it's a simple text that you are translating, the usage won't be more, right? Uh, sorry, the usage will be less in the backend. If you have a big text, the usage, I mean the Resources used by Azure will be more. So it's based on two things. First is number of endpoint calls, number of times you are running the code, number of times you are calling that API. Second, the content uh, present in each API call. If the content is less, then the Azure resources will be used less, so it will charge you less. If the content is more, Azure resources will be used more, so it will charge you more. So based on two things. Can you share the scripts here? Okay. Uh yes, I'll do it. So this is the script for our second lab. Okay, let me rename it as lab two. And let me pass the script for lab one as well.
send the code all you have to do is pass your own key over here and you will be able to use it remember guys you will be able to create services using free tier in my scenario i was not getting that option because i already have some services created using that same free tier and it's currently online in my portal okay so unless or until i delete those previous uh, uh, services i can't create another service using free tier but in your case you will be able to create using free tier okay so try to use it and you will be able to use these services for free okay no charge at all sorry i should say lab one right not part one Okay, fine. I have sent the scripts in the chat. All right, let's move on to our third service, guys, which is text to speech. So here I will have some written text, and what I'll be doing is I'll be converting it to audio or a, a speech, basically. Okay, basically I'll be converting some written text to audio. Fine. So let's see how to do it over here. So we'll go ahead and we'll try to understand how to do it. Let's write the code for it over here. Now, before running the code. There are there is a library that you need to install. So let me mention that library over here for you. And the name of that library is Azure Cognitive Services Speech. OK, and how to install it? This is the code. I'm mentioning it in my notes that I'll be sharing with you later on. So Azure. Cognitive. Services speech. Using this code, you can go ahead and install this uh, library over here. This is one library that we want to install. So let's install it. OK, in my scenario, it says al uh, already installed. OK, but in your case scenario, uh, the installation process will start. Fine. Uh, let me create a new file over here called text to speech. OK, and let's write our code. Now the code that we'll be writing will be divided into six parts in total. So let me go ahead and let me write those parts over here. We'll be dividing our code into six parts. So first part is to import the necessary libraries. So let's do that. So let me complete my part one over here. So here what I'll be doing is I'll be importing the OS module. For interacting with the operating system. In fact, OS module is not required, so let me remove it. Uh, let me only import this library over here called. Uh, so here, what I'll be doing is I'll be importing Azure Speech. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me import Azure Speech. I'll just go ahead and write the code. And I'll give it an alias over here called speech SDK. Let me just give it an alias speech SDK. So uh, I'm just giving it an alias just for easier reference. That's all. OK, if you do not want to give it alias, it's fine. Up to you. Fine. All right. Uh, I think this should cover our part one. OK, now let's go ahead and let's move on to part two now. So part two is setting up speech synthesis. Part two is setting up speech synthesis. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's move on to part two over here. So first what I'll be doing is I'll be creating a speech configuration object. So let me go ahead and let me create a speech configuration object. So I'll just go ahead, create a speech configuration object. Uh, there I need to pass two things over here, the subscription key and the region. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me pass the subscription key and the region. So in fact, uh, I have not created the speech service yet, right? So text to speech service falls under this category of speech service. I have not created it yet. Fine, so I'll have to create it. Sorry, I forgot to create it. Let me create it over here for you. Here it is. Let me create one. Hmm. 
Let will say sample speech. OK, I'm getting an error over here. Previously, it seems that this name is already in use. So we use a different name. But fine, so all you need to do is just fill up this form and you will be able to create speech service. Now, once this service is created, right, I'll be able to perform text to speech. I'll be able to perform speech to text and so on. Fine. So the creation is still in progress. We'll just wait for it to get over. Yes, it's over. Let me move on to that service over here. Fine. And now let me go to my code. Part one was done. Now part two. So first what I did in part two was I wanted to create a speech configuration object using subscription key and region. So let me mention my subscription key. I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll mention my subscription key. And second, I need to mention my region as well. So let me go ahead and uh, let me mention my region. So let me do it. I believe my region is East US. I'll just copy it and paste it in my code. Fine. Next, what do I need to do? So first, what I'm doing, creating a speech configuration object using subscription key and region. Now this configuration is required to authenticate and communicate with the speech service. OK, so let me save this configuration over here in a variable. I'll just go ahead and do that. Save it in a variable. OK, fine. Next, what do I need to do in part two? Next, I need to set up the audio output configuration so that I use the system's default speaker. Now that audio that we will, will be listening, I want it to listen through my default speaker. If you want to uh, select any other connected speaker in your laptop, you can do that. In my scenario, I want to use my default speaker. OK, so I'll go ahead and uh, write the code for it over here. So let me go ahead and do it. In fact, uh, before selecting my output, I feel I need to specify my input, right? So for my input, what I need to do is I need to mention the language in which I'll be communicating. So I'll be saying that the language will be US, uh, sorry, English. OK. So my input. Will be in English language that text that I'll be entering will be in English language. OK. Uh, fine. After that, uh, let me mention from where do I want to hear the speech? OK, or where do I want to hear the audio? So let me set up the audio output configuration to use the system's default speaker. So I will go ahead and do that over here. So let me go ahead and do it. And here I'll just mention to my code that I want to use my default speaker in my scenario. I just want to use the default one. OK, fine. And this audio configuration also I will save it in a variable. All right, fine. And next, what I'll be doing is all of these configurations. I will just. Uh, pass it. Uh, to my. I should say. Uh, the Azure portal, right? So let's go ahead and let's do that over here. So what I'll be doing is in order to do it, I will just go ahead and. Use this uh, method, I should say called speech. Recognizer, so let me go ahead and let me use this method called speech recognizer. And here I'll be passing the configurations that I have saved already. So let me go ahead and do that. First, the speech configuration. 
I have stored it in this variable over here. So I'll just go ahead and pass it. If this variable was named ABC, I would have passed ABC over here. Fine. So whatever is the variable, that same variable name I'll pass over here. Okay. Then next, I need to mention my audio configuration. So let me go ahead. Let me mention my audio configuration. It is saved in this variable over here. Let me copy it and paste it. If this variable name was XYZ, then here I would have passed XYZ, but it is not. So whatever variable it is, I'll just go ahead and pass it in my code. OK. Fine. And with this, uh, I think I'm done with my part two now. OK, uh, and. Your once this is on, I just want to. Uh, actually, this is. OK. In this scenario, if I am going in a correct manner, uh, I think if I'm not wrong, I need to use speaker now because I want to listen. Okay, microphone will come into play if I want to talk, but here I want to listen, so I need to use this parameter. Okay, fine, and I believe I am good. I hope I am good in this scenario. Okay, let me write the code again. I guess I'm missing a part over here. So first was to set up my key and region. Okay, so just the configuration details that are required for authentication. Uh, next, I want to set up the audio output configuration to use the system's default speaker over here. So let me write the code for that. I'll just go ahead, write the code over here. I'll say my audio output. Is there a method for that? Yes. So I'll say my audio output, I want to use my default speaker. So I'll say default speaker equal to true. OK. So my audio configuration is also done. OK, my audio configuration is also done. OK, so that is part two. Uh, previously, I wrote some unnecessary code. Fine, we'll forget it. And this is part two. I guess there's enough over here. Then moving on to part three. So in part three, what we'll do, guys, is we'll configure the speech synthesizer. OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention that. So in part three, we will configure the speech synthesizer. Let me go ahead and let me show you how to do it. So basically here, all I'll be doing is in third part, I'll be setting up the voice that I want to listen in the audio. OK, so Azure offers many, many voices. So I will just use one of those voices over here. OK, so I will say that in my speech or in my audio. In my speech or in my audio. I want to use a particular voice. I want to use a particular voice and I'll just be mentioning the name of that voice, which is EN US Jenny Neural. OK, so over here I'll be using a voice called Jenny Neural. OK, the uh, uh, voice will be talking in English language and the accent will be American. If you want to use UK accent, you can use that. OK, there are different different accents. So this is one voice name like that. There are other voice names also to see what are all different voice names. You can always refer the documentation, uh, but I don't believe in your career. You will use more voices over here. This one will be enough for you. But if at all you want to use more voices, you can. Uh, you just have to mention that voice name. That's it. OK. Fine, let me set up the speech synthesizer over here. And I, I, be, I believe my part three is done. Fine, let me move on to my part four now. So I'll go ahead, move on to my part four, which is creating a speech synthesizer object. Creating a speech synthesizer object. So let me go ahead, let me create create a speech synthesizer object over here. So I'll just be writing some code. 
this is part four. And here we go. Slowly, steadily, we'll write our code. I believe in order to create my object, I'll have to use a class called speech synthesizer. Is there a class like that? Speech synthesizer. Yes, there is. OK. Fine. And here I'll be just be passing all the configuration. So speech configuration, then audio configuration. OK, so let me go ahead and let me pass all the configurations one by one. Speech configuration. Then audio configuration. It is stored in this variable over here. Same variable I'll pass. If this variable was, let's say, ABC, then here in my code, I would have to write ABC, but it is not. So whatever that variable name is, I'll just go ahead and pass it. Fine. And with this, I believe we should be done with uh, part four. Now let's go ahead and let's move on to part five. So in part five, we'll be entering our text. OK. And in part six, we'll be getting the audio from that text. So in part five, we'll be entering our text. OK, so reading. Text input. OK, so let's go ahead and do it. So first I want to prompt the user in part five. In part five, I want to prompt the, the user to enter some text. OK. So I want to say the user that please enter some text. And I will write the code to accept the entered text over here that the user inputs. So let me write the code for that. And here we go. With this, we are getting our text entered from the user. OK, and what I want over here is that text. Uh, I want to pass uh, to my speech synthesizer object. In fact, I call the class to create object, but that object was not saved in a variable, right? Let me save it in a variable. So I'll just go ahead, save it in a variable. Using the object, we'll just uh, take that inputted text over here. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll say read the text and speak it in your voice. OK, read the text and speak it in your voice. I'll pass the text and that audio I'll be getting back. OK, so this is the result that I'll be getting from the AI service. This is the result over here that will be getting from the AI service. Fine, so with this part five is done. Then in part six, what we want is uh, we want to basically. Uh, I believe. Uh, I believe I should do error handling over here, but fine without error handling. Let me go ahead and uh, let me show it to you over here. OK, uh, my in part six, I intended to do error handling fine. Uh, here. Should I do error handling? Should I not? Uh, it's fine, I believe. Even if I don't do it, I will still be able to run the code at least. Let me run the code. Let's see. If at all there is any error encountered, we'll do error handling later. Fine. So in part six, I intended to do error handling, but for now, let me pause it. Just to save time. I'll enter a text. I'll say, my name is Smith. And I hope you are able to hear that voice. Were you able to hear the voice, guys? That voice is getting heard because of this line of code. Were you able to hear this voice? I was able to hear, but I don't know about you since it's on Teams. Michael Jackson voice available. I believe maybe I'm not sure. OK, I will have to refer the doc. We can't. OK, uh, should I increase the audio?
now guys now were you able to hear because i was able to hear or i will do one thing i'll remove my earphones okay so maybe let's see i'll remove my earphones okay and let me know now now were you able to hear guys i removed my earphones so little just give me a confirmation able to hear no kishan what about you buddy shyam still not able to hear let me know no okay i have even removed the earphones i can hear it let me try once again at least now ha so peter is able to hear peter is able to hear okay yes it in the chat uh so what i did was i removed my earphones so that the audio is um outputted from speaker and through the same thing you are able to hear so although the voice would be very low because i removed my earphones but i hope little peter is able to hear any anyone else who was able to hear a little so our code works anyone else who was able to hear peter can hear anyone else okay apart from peter uh is there a setting i can do in teams only can you okay my ramesh also can you is there any setting speaker is fine not okay so ramesh can hear peter can hear uh, others just try to run the code in your device it will work okay kishan is saying there is a setting okay, let me try that button what is that button that you sent kishan i can't see that button over here i guess it's different for you and me because uh, you have administration access but fine okay so you can try to uh, run it in your laptop same code will work no change whatsoever so i'll just paste the code over here in the chat for you okay i'll even write in the chat for those who were not able to hear the voice please run the above code in your own device okay fine so with this we have completed our third lab which is text to speech okay half of the people were able to hear it half of them were not uh so for those half who were not able to hear please run in your own laptop and you will definitely be able to hear so our code is working okay so our third lab is also done so let me highlight it over here in our notes so text to speech done okay now let's go ahead and let's move on to speech to text now it's under the same category over here so no need to create another service for that okay uh so it's under the same category Uh, as this third lab over here that we did for the third lab we had already created one service on the portal the same will be using for this fourth lab also okay so no need to create another service all right fine so let me go ahead and let me show you the code for this so what will be our code let's go ahead and let's talk about it in detail over here so let's start our code from scratch uh, to be specific 
uh, in this scenario, I mean, how many paths should I, um, you know, write my code? I believe eight parts. Let's see. Okay. Let me write it down in my notes that now I'll be doing Azure speech to text. That means I'll be saying some audio and that audio will be converted to text. Okay. And remember currently on my portal, I did not use the free tier because I have created some services already using free tier and those are currently online on my portal. So I was not able to use the free tier, but you will be able to use because in your scenario, you have not used these services previously. No? So you will be able to use these services for free, no cost whatsoever. Okay, you just have to run this code. That's it. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, let me mention in how many parts we'll be dividing our code. So we'll be dividing our code into eight parts. Okay. So let me mention those parts over here. So first, uh, in fact, before starting our code, uh, we need to make sure that the same library that we had installed earlier is installed in this scenario also. So previously, let's say if somebody didn't perform this text to speech lab, they want to directly go to speech to text. So make sure that you at least install this library over here. Once it's installed, then no need to install it ever again in your life, but you have to install it once at least. OK, so for those who don't want to perform text to speech directly, they want to go to speech to text. Make sure that you download or sorry, install this library over here. Fine. After installing it, let's go to our code. So first, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and install the necessary libraries. OK, so importing libraries is our first part. OK, let's write the code for it. So I'll create a new file over here called speech to text. OK, let's install. Uh, let's import the necessary libraries. First, I will. Um, import the Azure speech SDK and give it a shorter alias over here. So let me go ahead and do it. Let me import Azure speech. So same like I did previously. In fact, I can just copy that code and paste it over here. OK, same exact code. Fine. Next, what I will do is I will just go ahead and. Uh, try to set up the logic behind my speech recognition. OK, so let's do it. So part two. Which which is to set up. The speech recognition logic. So I'll be saying some speech to my laptop. My laptop will then send it to Azure portal and Azure portal will then give or uh, will convert it to text. OK, so the logic behind it. I want to config. Uh, I want to set up. OK. Fine, so let's see how to do it over here. So in order to do it, I will be using. This class over here called speech config class. And here I'll be passing two things just like I did earlier. So previously also I passed my subscription key and region. This time also I will do the same exact thing. OK, so in this scenario, my subscription key is uh, whatever it is. I've copied it. Let me paste it over here. OK, fine. Uh, next thing that I will do is what what speech I'm seeing it is in which language. OK, so I need to specify that. So the speech that I'll be saying to my laptop is in English language. So let me mention it to my code. That the speech that I'll be saying to my laptop will be in English language. OK, of US uh, accent, let's say. Fine. Uh, so this is done. Uh, I believe now I need to move on to my next part. So part one is done. Part two is done. Right. Part one is done, which is to import the NSA libraries and part two is done. OK, here I've uh, you know entered all the authentication details and said to my code that OK, I'll be, I'll be communicating to my laptop in, in English language. Fine. Let's move on to part three. So in part three, what I'll be doing is. Uh, 
I will be mentioning the configuration of the audio. OK. Uh, that I'll be say, uh, I'll be saying to my laptop. So. Audio configuration that is part three. Audio. Configuration. That is part three. All right, so let's do that over here. So in this scenario, I believe. I need to. Call this class called audio config. And here I need to say that OK, I'll be speaking in my default microphone only. OK, so the audio will be from my default microphone. So my audio configuration has been done. Then in that audio, what speech I'm saying that speech configuration is also done. So audio device configuration and in that audio, what speech I'll be saying that configuration is also done. Fine. Then I just want to go ahead and uh, move on to my next part over here, which is part four. And part four is to actually send the audio to the Azure portal. OK, or in, to be formal, I should say that I want to create a speech recognizer. In simple words, I'll be, I'll be just be sending the audio to the Azure portal. That's it. So let me send the audio to the Azure portal. So here, what I'll be doing is I'll be calling a class called speech recognizer. Uh, there I'll be passing two things, my speech configuration and audio configuration. So let me go ahead and do that. Speech configuration and audio configuration. OK, this is done. And once this is connected now, once my configuration is connected to the Azure portal, I need to tell the user that please speak into the microphone. I'll say speak. Into the microphone. So that the user knows when to speak. OK, so here I'm just connecting uh, to the Azure portal using the configuration details over here that I'd set up earlier. OK, fine. And uh, once this is done, OK, uh, what I need to do is I need to move on to my next part. I need to move on to my next part, uh, which is to actually. I should say. Uh, get. Uh, the text from speech, OK, so I should say perform. Speech recognition or in simple words, get the tech, uh, get the speech. Sorry, my mistake. Get the text from speech. OK, so the speech that I'll be sending to my laptop from that speech. I want to get the text of what I've actually said. Let me go ahead and let me mention that. So this is part five. I'll just write the code in order to do it. I forgot to save the object in a variable over here. Let me go ahead and do that. I'll just save it in this variable. You can name it anything. OK. Uh, let me give it a meaningful name. Fine. Using the object, I'll go ahead and call this method over here called recognize. One async. This is the method. OK. And then I want to get the text from the Azure portal. So I'm sending the speech to the Azure portal from that speech. I want to get the text. OK, so with this I will be getting the speech recognition result. Speech. Recognition. Result. OK, once I get the speech recognition result, all I want to do is I just want to print it. So let me go ahead and let me print it over here. So I'll just say print. The result and. The result will be in the form of a dictionary in that dictionary. There is a key called text. Inside that key you will have a value which is the actual value that the Azure portal is sending to you. OK, that uh, 
speech recognition value, or I should say that text value. Okay, that I just want to print. So this was part six. Okay, so part six was to print the result. Fine. I believe we have completed our code. Let me go ahead and let me run it. Let's see whether it works or are there any issues. Speech to text. Hello, my name is Smith and we are in a webinar testing the speech service. And you can see whatever I have mentioned, right? You can see the text is getting outputted exactly like I mentioned. OK, let me mention something else. Let me speak something else. Uh, so uh, let me take a student's name over here. Let me take some names. So we are in this webinar just testing out the service. And along with we, we have Chand, Abhishek, Soumya, and many others. And you can see whatever I mentioned is being outputted over here exactly as I spoke. Okay. So I hope you have understood this fourth lab also. Okay, guys, making sense up till here. So after the tea break, we have learned how to do speech to sorry text to speech and speech to text both of the things i hope you have understood making sense guys yes okay fine let me send the code to you guys i'll just remove the key and send the code okay fine so let me write it down in my notes that we are done with speech to text also. Fine. Now let's move on to Azure AI computer vision. OK, so this is another service. This comes under the category of vision services category. So out of the four categories, we have already looked into two of them. First was language services category. Second was speech services category. And we have looked into some of exam some of the examples of those categories, right? Let me move on to the third category, which is vision services category. Here there are many services. One is Azure AI computer vision. There are other services also. One of them is Azure AI computer vision. OK, so here what we'll be doing is I'll be having an image. And from that image, whatever text is written in that image now, I want to detect that text. So detecting uh, text from images. OK, uh, so I can do that. There are many other things we can do. OK, but what we'll be doing with this service is uh, from that. Uh, image, whatever text is mentioned in that image, I want to get the. Text, OK, so let's go ahead and do it. For example, let's say I take a snapshot. Of this image over here. So here you can see I have an image. In this image, there are there are many texts written. OK, so I want to detect those texts so I can do it using Azure AI computer vision. OK, so from image detecting text. OK, let's do it. Let's go ahead and let's see how to do it over for that. We'll have to create. A vision service. Let's go ahead and do it. Computer vision service. Let me create it. When I try to create it, it gives me a form that I have to fill out. Let me go ahead and let me fill out that form. I'll say text from image, which is what I'm going to do now. There are many other things that I can do. One thing that I'm doing over here is getting text from my image. OK, validation failed. OK, this uh, name should be something else. OK, let me enter a different name which is not already used. OK, fine, this name works. Now I'm creating this computer vision service. So it will take a while, maybe 20, 30 seconds to create it. And after that, we'll see how to go ahead. 
but up till here if there are any doubts you can let me know okay and guys this uh, example that i'm showing to you of getting text from image is called optical character recognition ocr optical character recognition okay that means from images getting characters or text okay so getting text from images it comes under this field called optical character recognition and uh, this is in demand lately okay fine previously we had to build our old own ai models to do that but now you can just use this model as it is okay and azure offers it for free uh, the only disadvantage is with free tier tier uh, you can only call the api for a certain uh, period of time let's say in uh, uh, 5 hours 30 times something like that there is a limit to how much you can call but apart from that limit there is nothing else okay you can keep on using the free tier if you want all right fine so let's go ahead and let's start by using this service called computer vision service and we'll be using it for this field called optical character recognition, which is nothing but uh, getting text from an image. All right, let's see how to do it. So in order to do it, guys, uh, we will need to install some libraries. So let's see how to do it. By the way, let me give a heading over here in my notes that we are now into a service called computer vision service. And we need to install some libraries. Uh, so one library is Azure Cognitive Services Vision, and another, um, in fact, after Vision we have more name so dash computer vision. So this is the full name of the library. This is one library, Azure Cognitive Services Vision Computer Vision. Okay, this is full name of one library. Like this, there is another library over here called pillow so these are the two libraries that you need to use okay and if you have already installed them let's say you want to make sure that they are upgraded uh they are, you are using the upgraded version you just have to put this extra signal over here called dash dash upgrade this will make sure that this library that you are installing is upgraded to the recent version but fine uh, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you want to upgrade to the recent version, you can. I believe I've already installed. I just need to upgrade it. So I'll just run this code over here. And by the way, let me create a new coding file called ocr.py. OK, sorry, it is dash dash upgrade. Right, so double hyphen upgrade. Huh. It says no such option. OK, let me write it here from scratch. Pip install dash dash upgrade. Azure dash. Cognitive. Services. Vision. Computer vision. I believe. Achha, sorry, upgrade spelling is wrong. Nah? D. -E. My mistake. Right? Sorry. Huh. Fine. It seems it was already upgraded in my laptop, but fine. This was just a safe check that I did from my end. So it's OK. All right. So now uh, there is another library, right? Pillow, the one that I mentioned. I believe I have that also, but for the, on the safer side, let me install it. Yes, I already have it. It says requirement already satisfied. All right, the necessary libraries are uh, installed. Now we can just go ahead and directly move on to our code. Fine, so let's do it. Let's move on to our code over here. Now this code also will be dividing into multiple parts. OK, so let's go ahead and do it. We'll divide our code just like in other labs. In this lab also, we'll divide it into multiple parts. So part one. Let me mention it in my notes over here. So our code. Be dividing into multiple parts. 
part one is to import the necessary libraries. Let's do that. In this scenario, there are multiple libraries that I want to import. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and write the code for it. Let me write the code. I'll just complete writing the code over here. Just some necessary libraries. Let me import this class. OK. Uh, I'll need to do some more imports over here. Mm, let me do more imports. Uh, I believe one more and then I should be done. So just some necessary imports that we need to do. Uh, I believe this is MS REST. Cognitive services credentials. OK, fine. So part one guy is done. We are done with the necessary imports. Uh, now I'm thinking not all will be used by me, but fine. I just want to be on the safer side. So as I keep on remembering the code, you know, maybe I'll be using some of these. Fine, not all will be used. Let's see. OK. So now let's move on to part. Two. In fact, I need to do more imports over here. Sorry. Let me do more imports. From the pillow library, I want to import this class called image. That will actually help me to read the image. OK, fine. I think now it should be enough. Not all will be used by me. Let's see. As I keep on remembering the code, some will be used, some will not be used. Let's see. OK, fine. So part one done. Now part two guys is to set up the necessary authentication. We have been doing it in all the labs, right? Part two is always to set up the authentication. So let's do that. So here what I'll be doing is I'll be using this class. And inside the class. I'll be. Passing two things over here. First is my endpoint. So let me go ahead to my Azure portal and get the endpoint over here. So I'll just go ahead to my Azure portal, get the endpoint of this service. Okay, here is the endpoint. Let me store it over here. Fine. Next, what I need to do is I need to call this class. And inside the class, I need to pass my key. So let me go ahead. Let me fetch my key from the Azure portal. And that key I'll pass over here. Fine. I think this should be enough to set up my authentication. If we get any errors, we'll see. OK, now if I'm calling this class, object of the class will be created. Let me call it computer vision. Client. OK, I hope I'm not doing any spelling mistake or something like that. Is there any spelling mistake? Fine, we'll see it later on. If at all there is any, we'll try to fix it. OK, fine. Now what I want to do is uh, I need to move on to my next part over here, which is to specify the image that I want to read. OK, so third part is to specify the image that I want to read. Image to read.
So I believe there is already an image in uh, that is offered by Microsoft. So let me go ahead and let me search for it over here. So I believe it is learn dot Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft dot com slash Azure slash. Huh, this one. This is the image that I want to use, so the same image I'll be passing in my code. OK, so let me go ahead and let me pass the same image over here. I'll say that I want to read this image URL. Let me pass that image URL. OK, fine. And uh, uh, up till now I've just passed the URL, but I have not written any code to actually read it. So let me write the actual logic to read this image over here. Uh, the URL of which I have passed. So I'll do it using this object that I've created earlier. I'll say I want to read the image. So let me pass the image URL, the one that I have saved. And I want to um have raw text obtained from that image. So I'll say raw equal to true. OK, I don't want to do any changes uh, to the image before reading. I just want to read the raw image. Uh, sometimes you want to, bl uh, let's say, uh, you know, do some improvements in the image before reading. Here I don't want to do it. Fine. Uh, even though my image is a little blurred, but still, I believe our service should be able to, you know, read out these texts. Let's see. OK, if it doesn't, we'll see what to do. All right. Uh, after that, what I want to actually do over here is, if I'm not wrong, I need to specify the headers over here. So let me go ahead and do it. Let me specify the headers. So once I get the read response back, uh, after I have done this, I believe, do I need to? In fact, I have already got it right. So I don't think I should do anything more over here. Fine. So I'm just thinking any other changes we can do. But I believe. I'm OK with this. OK, let's see what do we get. Uh, I'm just thinking, should we do more stuff? In this scenario, I believe in order to actually get the result, I need to call this method. I need to call this method. OK, let me print out first. Let me see. Let me print it out. Let's see. CR dot. Why am I getting issues in the code? Mm, endpoint is fine. This is fine. Just for simplicity, I'm just storing it in a variable and that variable I'm passing over here just to improve the readability a bit. Any other? Oh, okay. Sorry, there is an issue in import. Okay, now let's see. Uh, I want to read the response that I'm getting over here. Let's read it. Let's run this file. Let's see. OK, so this is an object that I'm getting. OK, so using this object. Fine. So using this object, now I will have to actually call a method. And if I'm not wrong, uh, the name of the method is get underscore read underscore result. I think this is the actual method. OK, and inside it, I believe it expects a ID. So let me go ahead and let me pass that ID. 
I'll just say. One, two, three. Fine. And now. Let me go ahead and once I call this uh, method, I should get another object over here called read results. Let me print that. Let's see what I get. OK, so here there is an error. OK, it says there's nothing called get underscore read underscore result. OK, raw response. Sorry, my mistake. I should use this object over here. OK, sorry, the name of the object was wrong. My mistake. Let me correct it. OK. Says operation turn not found. OK, I believe it's related to the operation ID that I'm passing over here. Oh, uh, let me do one thing, guys. I'll just comment this code. I just want to check. That here. I'm getting a response. And I believe I was also able to view the location. Let me check. And once I actually understand what is this, what is being printed over here, we can then go ahead. Operation location, OK. I believe it will be in this key called headers. Ah, OK. OK, fine. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to get this ID over here. So I will say I want to split based on slash. OK, so what I want to do guys is I want to get this ID, this last ID. OK, this is what I want to get. So what I will say to my code is. From this location. Split. Based on. Based on forward slash so that you get things in the form of a list because split method we know gives output in the form of a list and you will see that is exactly what it will do over here. Yes, it gives it in the form of list and I want this last ID. So that I will get it from using the index minus one. OK, so let me get that index over here minus one. And now. OK, fine, I've got that ID. Now this ID, I will save it in this variable over here. Called operation ID. Fine. And now. That operation ID, I will pass to this method. OK, let's see now. OK, fine. So over here it's working over here. Fine, I'm not getting any error. Now what I want to do is I want to print the uh, text that was being de uh, detected from images. OK, so let me go ahead and do that. Let me print the text that is uh, being obtained over here. So in order to do this, if I'm not wrong, I should go into this key called analyze. Uh, analyze. Result. Wrong, let me print it if it's the correct one. OK, it says none. OK. Side. Mm -hmm. Why do I say none? Uh, have I done any mistake over here in my code? It should not say none, no? Mm. Okay, what is my status? Was it succeeded or not? 
let me check. OK, it says running. Should say succeeded now. Why should it say run? OK. Uh, in this scenario. Mm -hmm. OK, let me do one thing. Says running over here. What I want to do in this scenario is I will say. If. The status is not. Either of these two, what are these two? First is not started category. Second is running category. Then what I want to do is break. See when it will not be not started running category only if it's completed. So if it's completed, what I want to do is I want to break. And here. Continuously I should get I should use a loop over here. Say while true. Okay, let me put this inside of a loop. OK, so keep on getting the result one by one and if it's. Not started or running, that means it's completed in that scenario. I want to break the loop. After that, I want to give a. You know, a break of one second before I move on to the next iteration in the loop. Fine, let me do that. Is read result. Ah, obviously, it will not be defined over here because we have just called it afterwards. Okay. Uh, now let me run my code over here. Now I will say if read result dot status is uh, succeeded operations data scores dot succeeded. In that scenario, what I want to do is I will just want to print the results over here. Okay. Analyze the result. Let's see. Let's see, we have run, ran a loop. OK. And inside analyze result. There is another key called read underscore results. Let me print value of that. Mm. And now. I have. Oh, uh, object. OK. So let me run a loop. Over here, I'll just go ahead, run a loop. I'll just say for. My result in. This. Mm, then that result will be divided into multiple lines. So let me use a loop to get those lines as well. So I'll just go ahead use loops. Get the text in that line. Fine. Let's see. OK, and you can see here, guys, I'm getting all the text from that image. Your we had image. You can see there were many texts. There was 935 AM, right? That is exactly what my code is predict uh, code is saying uh, my output of the code is saying. Then there was another called conference room, right? This was a text and that is exactly what my output is saying. Then there was another text over here. Town hall. 
and that is exactly what my code output is saying town hall uh, so you can print the text if you want uh, to print more information for example now when these texts were getting uh, you know detected basically it was detected how uh, internally what is happening is there is a rectangle being drawn over them so if you want to get the coordinates of those rectangles okay you can get that as well so if you want to get the coordinates of those rectangles you can get that as well so remember a rectangle has four points so you will get a total i believe x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and x4 y4 so total eight uh values in total okay x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 total eight values in total if you want to print the coordinates of box you should get eight values in total so let me print those uh, coordinates over here i'll just go ahead and do that i'll just print those coordinates and here you might be wondering why did i use a while loop because i want to get many text from the image na so that's why i used a while loop okay and uh, once all the texts are detected then the status will change to succeeded and in that scenario i want to break the loop okay uh, and once the status is succeeded once we have got all the texts then i just i have just printed the results that were obtained from the azure portal that's all fine here what i want to do is i want to get the coordinates of the rectangle surrounding the text so let me get that and now you will be seeing that you will get you will get the coordinates also and as i spoke you will get eight values in those coordinates x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 x4 y4 eight coordinates you can see for each text over here fine so with this we have learned how to uh, you know detect text from a image so with this one more service is over getting text from a image up till now if you have any doubt let me know i will just revise the code again for you right from scratch over here first what we did we imported the necessary modules for computer vision authentication and other standard operations after that what did we do we just uh, set up our authentication by mentioning the subscription key endpoint okay uh and then we created a computer vision client object using the api key and that endpoint this object will be used to interact with the computer vision api then after that we try to read the file remotely right so we specify the url of the image that we want to analyze then we call the read method of the api to analyze the image at the provided url uh, then Uh, by the way if you you might be wondering why is raw equal to true used over here okay so raw equal to true is used uh, to get uh, i should say uh, how should i explain this over here um, so it is used to get the operations location nothing else okay so uh, the location of the operation nothing else uh, then uh, after that what we did was one by one uh, we just ran a loop to get you know uh, one one text at a time from the image and once all the text was fetched uh, then what we did was we printed the results that we got from the azure portal that's all okay so guys you can see the code is very simple all you need to do is um, going forward you need to use the same code all you need to do is change the endpoint and the key that's all so in your laptop if you want to run you just need to change the endpoint and the key in fact endpoint will be same my mistake you will only change the key that's all no need to change the endpoint okay so i am putting the code over here in the chat for you with this another service is done this was computer vision service okay so let me highlight it in our notes that this service is also done like this you can do many things guys in vision services category 
there is one service called uh, image analyzer so currently in computer vision service what did we do we were just getting the text but we were not analyzing the image as to what that person is doing in the text and so on so if you want to understand what that image is all about okay then there is a service called image analyzer the code will mostly be the same maybe two or three lines will change in the code in case of that service okay fine uh, moving on to our last service of today guys which is content moderator so uh, those of you guys who watch live uh, youtube videos you must be seeing that there is a chat next to it right and often the video creators appoint chat moderators content moderators but that is currently done manually right what if you want to do it automatically you can take help of this service over here if you want okay uh, so what it will do is it will uh, detect any cuss words okay that is being mentioned in the chat anything like that so let me show you how to implement it it's very simple okay this is our last service for today so let me go ahead and let me show you how to implement it from scratch but up till here if there is any doubt please let me know any doubt guys and by the way if we get time uh, i'll show you that image analyzer service okay the one that i talked about where i said that apart from detecting the text it will also detect what is happening in that image whether a person is presenting something in that image or a tiger is there in the it will actually analyze the image computer vision service is just detecting text but that image analyzer service will not only detect text it will also analyze the image that what is actually happening in the image fine all right so let's go ahead and up till now if there are any doubts please let me know i'll just go through the chat maybe i have missed something i didn't read the chat while i was explaining let me go through it if there are any doubts please let me know up till now i hope everything is making sense uh yes i guess nandan has a doubt nandan you can let me know your hand is raised acha i guess it might be by mistake because yes remove that hand raise okay fine so if anybody has any doubt you can let me know okay fine going to our last service guys which is content moderator service so let me go ahead and let me show you how it works uh so as i said in your youtube live videos you have chat next to the video right and often the creators what do they do often the channel owners what do they do is they open appoint chat moderators okay but that is being done manually what if you want to do it automatically you can do it with the help of this service over here fine so let's go ahead and let's see how to do it over here in order to do it guys we need to install a library so let me go ahead and let me show you what is that library so i'll just show to you what is the library so you just need to install this library over here called azure cognitive services vision content moderator okay in and if you have already installed it make sure that you upgrade it to the latest version so if you want to upgrade it you just need to put this extra signal over here that's it okay in my scenario i've already installed it let me just make sure that it is upgraded and before doing that i'll just create a new file over here uh, let me call this content mod dot py Okay. Over here, I have written the code. It says could not find. Okay. Is there a spelling mistake? Azure Cognitive Services. Acha. Yes, Cognitive. There was a spelling mistake. Okay. Any more spelling mistake? Azure Cog Cognitive. Okay, Native. 
cognitive services vision content moderator okay now it's fine all right fine let's go ahead and let's write our code so first what we'll do is we'll just go ahead get the libraries important libraries over here so that is part one part one of our code to get the important libraries let me mention the same import the necessary libraries okay so i'll just go ahead write the code to do it cognitive services okay from this folder i want sorry from this file i want to get this class let me do more imports over here and one more i'll just view the previous file and the same import that i did earlier same i'll do now okay fine so this last import will help us for authentication the other imports help us to actually use this service over here fine let's go ahead now first part done let's go ahead and let's move on to the second part now guys so in the second part what i'll be doing is uh, i'll be setting up my authentication so let's go ahead and do that let's set up the necessary authentication over here so in this scenario uh, let me give a comment that we are moving on to part two and let me specify it in my notes also that part two is to set up authentication okay fine let's do it and here i need to store my endpoint and the subscription key these two things mm -hmm. so let's do it So my end point, let me go ahead and let me specify. By the way, this content moderator service comes under the category of decision services category, and we have not created any service of this category. Fine, so we'll have to create it. So decision services category, or I should say, uh, content moderator service once you create a service of that category you don't need to do it again and let me fill out this form to create this service content moderation okay fine and that service should be created now Once it is created in a few seconds, I will get the endpoint to that service and put it in my code. We'll just wait for a few seconds, around 10 to 20 seconds, and we should be done. Let's wait. And we should be done soon. Okay, we are done. Fine. So let me go to that service, get the endpoint. There we go. Fine. After getting the endpoint, I will get uh, my key also. That key, I will have to store it in this class. Okay, let me do it. Okay, fine. And fine, authentication will be done and object of that authentication will be created. Okay, fine. Now what I want to do is I will have a text file 
created. Okay, so third step over here, my third part. My third part in this scenario is to create a text file having profanity is in it. That means having some bad words in it. Okay, so that our service can later detect it. Okay, so let me create such file. Uh, I'll just go to this data sets folder, create it. Say new sample mod. Uh, the let me mention over here the England teams performance in the World Cup was dash. OK, now there's a profanity. I want my uh, service to detect it. Fine, so let's see how to do it over here. OK, fine. So path three was to create a file and uh, then read that file and read that file or i should say uh, mention or fine i can say read that file and read that file okay so let's do it let's do path three let me read that file away you know to read it i'll have to open it up so let me go ahead and let me open up over here. So I'll open up this file. It is inside D drive data sets folder. Name of the file is sample mod dot txt. What I want to do it is read it. Uh, it is in binary format and once I read it, object should be created. Let me name that object. Okay, fine. After that, what I want to do over here while reading it, so uh, I will have to call this method over here. Let me call this method called screen underscore text. And what it will do is, uh, this is the one that will actually, you know, detect all the profanities. So first I need to mention the content type of the text that is currently there in the file. Say text content type equal to, I'll say it is a plain text file, nothing else, right? Plain text file. Okay, then what is the actual text that I want to read? That will be obtained using this object over here. After that, what is the language mentioned in the file? I'll say English. And if at all autocorrect is required, yes, do that. Then uh, if at all there is any sensitive information, highlight that as well. OK, fine, this is enough, I believe. And what should happen over here? Is I want to print it now. I want to print it in a very good manner. So I will say pretty print, p print. Okay, pretty print. So it will just print it in a much more readable format compared to your normal print function. This pre print function prints it in a more readable format. Fine. Here I should have an object created. And using that object, I'll call this method called as dict. So whatever is the response, I'll get it in dictionary format. Fine. And now let me run this code over here. I believe there is some issue. In my code. Is there any issue? Anything that I have missed? Uh, 
credentials. Okay. Cognitive service credentials is fine. <laughs> Any mistake I'm doing that I cannot observe over here. Oh, sorry, my mistake. I should pass it inside of this parameter called credentials. Okay, now it should work. Okay, so we have corrected our mistake and now let's go ahead. And hopefully it should uh, detect that profanity here. I'm getting an error. Okay, bad request. Why are we having bad request? Mm. Scenario. Bad request. Mm -hmm. Let me just read it. Operation returned an invalid status code. I hope my key is right. The endpoint is definitely right. OK, so. Um, I'm still getting bad requests. OK, let me do one thing. Previously, I created a service same service content moderator service but there i had made sure that i am given this role assignment called uh, cognitive services role assignment yes okay let me try to use key of this one let's see I just want to check whether it is any uh, IAM issue or is this my code issue? It says unauthorized. Okay. Why would it say unauthorized? Mm. Are we? doing any sort of uh, mistake over here bad request why would it say bad request I've current correctly mentioned my key endpoint everything seems to be done Bad request. It only happens if the key or endpoint is wrong, right? Mm, let me check the code. Am I doing any mistake? Let's check. Let's check. Let's check over here. Okay. It says unauthorized. It doesn't say bad request. It says unauthorized. Okay. Oh, that too in this code. Okay. Sample mod. Any mistake I'm doing over here? Unauthorized. OK, and what if if I use the service that I created just now, which is without that role assignment? Currently, I have not assigned any role. Uh, so there, if I use the key, this, this is our original one that we used earlier. 
Oh, sorry. My mistake, guys. Uh, previously, when I used this service, I changed the key, but I didn't change the endpoint. So obviously, I'll have to change the endpoint as well over there. Okay. And then the key. Okay. And let's run it. Now it says bad request. Okay. Mm. Text type is fine. That's a plain text only. Any other issues that could arise over here? Okay, so this is definitely not because of that access control I am. This could be issue with respect to my code. This is fine. Text content. This is fine. Language. Okay. Endpoint. Credentials. Operation returned. Okay. Bad request. Uh, okay. Any missing thing that I'm doing? Okay. Over your Sham. Okay, Chand has mentioned in the chat. I believe one more spelling to be corrected. Achha, he has mentioned this 15 minutes back. Okay, I think that is corrected now. Then Sham mentioned 10 minutes back that share as parts of each program lab. Your Achha, you mean the, those notes na, that I am writing? Huh, that I'll share. Is that what you're asking? That I'll share. Then Sham says from the YouTube comment, you told. The YouTube comment example that you told, have you come across any cases where YouTube API was utilized to read the comment? Yes, in fact, we have. I have done it inside my class itself. It's just that uh, there you are getting uh, data constantly, right? So how to manage that data? For that, you need to learn about something called stream processing. So it's just that the data in which manner it is coming, that is changing. But yes, in one of my classes, I have implemented the same. OK, but before that, since in YouTube comments, you get data continuously, right? So there you need to learn about stream processing. Handle that data using stream processing related concepts, and then rest of the things will remain the same. OK, but before that, I believe any issue inside this file. Sample mod. This is correct. Okay. Uh, I think let's do one thing. I have a file that I used earlier today. Let me check whether it works over there. I think it's in OneDrive. Lecture materials. Okay, let me check whether this works over here. Uh, I'm just trying to understand. Is it issue with our code? OK, so it works over here. So definitely it's not issue with respect to. The portal, OK, so what what else did I do in this code? Code is the same. OK, so let me copy it. Or is the same. 
Okay, fine. Let me go back to our core. Uh, let's see now what happens. It says pity print not defined. Yes, OK. So in order to solve this, I believe I need an extra library. And if I'm not wrong, I need to import it from pprint only. So from pprint import pprint. P print. OK, so maybe in the previous code that we wrote some spelling mistake or something was happening because now you can see the idea is the same endpoint is just that in this code I have saved it in different variables and those variables I have used over here in this class. Previously, we directly mentioned the values. We did not save in variables, but fine. Uh, so something. Some spelling mistake, something I was doing over there because of which it was not working, but fine. Now you can see the same logic, same everything is working. And yes, you can see it had, It has detected a term shit over here. OK, uh, let me have more profanity inside my text. So I'll go ahead and have more profanity over here. So it's called sample mod, right? Where is it? Where is it? Sample, sample mod. EQRS. OK, sample mod. Where it go? Your. Netherlands looked better than then. OK. So I have included one more profanity term, so two profanity terms. So my AI service should identify both the two. Like that, you can have more profanity terms. You can, you know, try and test, test it out. And you can see it has identified two profanity terms over here. Fine. So this is how you can use this service called content moderator service. OK. So guys, with this, we have completed all the services that we intended to content moderator service is also done. So today, as we discuss, we are going to cover only pre-built AI models that Azure offers, and uh, those are divided into four categories. We have seen examples of all those four categories. So I hope the webinar was helpful to you. What I will do is the code for this last lab also. I'll make sure that uh, is shared with you. So let me share it with you guys. OK, so one student has a doubt. One student says, could you please help with any blog post, any reference regarding to Copilot AI for Microsoft Defender? Uh, I don't believe I have it in top of my head, but all I do is um, I just refer the Microsoft documentation. There is no other place better than that. So even uh, for Copilot, there, there are no good YouTube channels also. So all I do is just go through a documentation. And if you let's have a doubt in the documentation, you know, then uh, maybe individual concepts. Uh, you can Google and you know investigate more research more. But I believe Microsoft documentation is the best place. I myself have not encountered any other good resource to share with you. OK, but if I find it out, I'll definitely make sure that our uh, team mails it to you. I'll make sure uh, that our team mails all the the entire list. OK. So maybe after the webinar, I'll just try to search, but at the top of my head, I don't remember any good. Uh, 
blog posts apart from Microsoft documentation. Okay, fine. All right, so thank you guys. Uh, I hope the webinar was instructive to you. You learned something of value. Okay, and if you have any doubt, you can always reach out to us on LinkedIn, okay, on our social media platforms. All right, so I hope there are no other doubts and uh, we can end. Yes, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Sham. Okay. So Archie, if you are there, you can take over. Or Chaitali, if you are there. Th thank you so much. Oh, yes, sir. Hi, ah, yes, Archie. I am done for today, so you can take over. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for wonderful webinar. Uh, I hope all the participants found today artificial intelligence uh, webinar, which was hosted by Smith, sir. If you have any question or queries, please. Uh, free field to ask our service provide you uh, best answers if you have any question or queries please ask to sir also i shared the feedback form so guys uh, please fill this feedback form uh, we value your feedback to continuously uh, improve our webinar Participant also you can register for our upcoming uh, webinar. Please note that register registration is mandatory for uh, event uh, webinar. Also subscribe our all uh, social media platform for the uh, upcoming events, webinars and more. And we already share a learning achievement batch. Uh, so guys go and redeem your batch after this webinar ends.